Leaders are brought to you by Abacus Tax and Accounting Services, the Bill Walsh Automotive Group, Eureka Savings Bank, Financial Plus Credit Union, Hometown National Bank, Illinois Valley Credit Union, Jeff Perry, Buick GMC, LaSalle Body and Fender, Peru Federal Savings Bank, St. Margaret's Health, your local Subway restaurant, and Town and Country Services. Listen to the case. and welcome to LP football from Sycamore High School as we are to week five of the high school football season and it's a big one. LP and Sycamore from Sycamore. Two teams that uh, did not get to play in the spring and teams that uh, I guess took home Coke uh, conference titles with LP finishing 5-0 and uh, Sycamore at 6-0. and And joining me tonight is uh, Mike Porter and Mike, uh, we're back in Sycamore Sycamore for the second straight time. Uh, last time LP played the Spartans, it was here in uh, Sycamore, and uh, Sycamore definitely had the better yeah, of the Cavaliers. I think it was a running clock that night. Yeah, I didn't think it was very pretty, if I remember correctly. 45-0, yep, yeah, nope, in 2019, but uh, uh, LP's program has uh, came uh, up quite a bit since then. Of course, 2019, they were able to get in the playoffs, and uh, Sycamore is a perennial playoff team. In fact, the Spartans come in fifth in Class 5A, and uh, the Cavaliers were knocking on the door yep. of the top 10 earlier this season before falling just short against Metamora. But uh, this is another one of those matchups, Mike, where you play the Morrises, the Canelands, Metamora, and Sycamore, where you really find out where you stand as far as uh, going against the cream of the crop. Right, you know, in the conference, it's always, you know, Sycamore, like you said, Sycamore, Morris, Caneland, those are the three teams that are consistently good, and these are the teams that LP wants to compete with on a yearly basis, so this is the kind of game that they want to come in to Sycamore and play hard and come out with a victory. And Sycamore, it's their homecoming, so uh, perhaps our halftime show, just a forewarning, <laughs> uh, could be a long halftime show tonight. And we're hoping the rain stays away, uh, especially the lightning. I know there was some lightning and thunder uh, down in the Illinois Valley before we took off from the station. And uh, uh, looking at the future radar, there is a chance of rain as this game moves along. Uh, we'll be following some other games, too, tonight as part of our Subway scoreboard update. Some other games in the Interstate 8 uh, Conference. Uh, Ottawa at Woodstock North. Morris hosting Marengo. Woodstock home to Caneland. And, uh, you know, teams that we want to follow uh, non-conference-wise. Teams that uh, we hope they keep winning to help LP's uh, playoff resume. Metamora, who's 4-0, uh, hosting Dunlap. And Morton, who's rattled off three straight yep, wins, yep. is at Washington. That's probably going to be a good one down in the middle line. I Morton and Washington. Yeah, I would teams. imagine those teams are. Uh, no love loss between those no, two schools. No, no, there are definitely think. rivals there. And I'm sure, like you said, LP wants uh, Morton to take care of Washington, which is probably not an easy task, no. but, um, you know, for their playoff points. Yeah, it's getting too early. I thought about, Mike, putting out the playoff outlook, but I'm thinking, you know, it's only four games right. in. Uh, obviously, you need five to become eligible. LP, do the math. They're three and one. So uh, if you can win tonight, that would go obviously a long ways into what they want to do, and that is uh, make the playoffs for the second straight full season. Uh, some other games in our area that are outside the conference tonight. Princeton at Kiwani is a huge, huge game in the Three Rivers. Two undefeated teams there. Bureau Valley's at Sterling Newman. Streeter home to Mantino tonight. Marquette welcoming in Chicago Hope Academy. Fieldcrest at Leroy and Seneca home to Iroquois West. Tomorrow uh, we'll have more football for you on WLPO. St. Bede home to Riverdale's part of the Bruins uh, homecoming. Uh, 1245 pregame myself and Mike Brown will bring you that one. On our sister station, 99.3 WAJK tomorrow, it will be Hall at Mendota. And that game will kick off at two. Two teams that used to play each other in the NCIC. Sure. Uh, Mendota and Hall went their separate ways, and uh, now they're back. And I know head coach Nick Garini of Hall was on a state title team in the 90s with Gary Vecini as a coach and yep, said uh, his senior year, Mendota gave them their only loss. So uh, that'll be cool to see Hall and Mendota renew their rivalry. And by the way, if you got one of our magnet schedules, 
uh, brought to you courtesy by Eureka Savings Bank. Originally, that game was supposed to be tonight, but Hall had to change two of their games at the last minute because of an officiating Ruffer, shortage. Yep, yeah. a referee shortage. So make sure, hopefully you didn't show up to Mendota tonight thinking you're going to see football. At least it's not a long drive. If you did show up to Mendota, you can turn around and go back home, but not like Sycamore. Uh, but yeah, we'll have that game for you, 99-3 WAJK. So a lot of football to be had. Of course, we'll have Cardinal baseball this weekend against the Cubs. Uh, Cubs are trying to be spoiler. Cardinals just trying to whittle down a magic number to get into the uh, playoffs. So that's setting the stage. We're looking forward to a good one tonight. Uh, it is still the pregame show. Sycamore and LP. We're going to take our first break, which will include our coach's interview. And during the coach's interview, you'll hear our LaSalle body and fender injury status update. When your car gets banged up, call LaSalle body and fender. You can also call them for 24-hour towing at 815-223-0598. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter from Sycamore High School. We're continuing our pregame coverage moments away from Cavalier football on the road tonight against Sycamore. We'll be right back after this message and a coach's interview. That uh, <coughs> Ganya paint. You never know if the team that you're playing could pick up COVID or, you know, be that, it, it, whatever it is, it's the issues uh, all, all around, uh, arise around uh, kind of COVID and things like that. But, you know, we felt that as a team that, and as a staff that, you know, we, uh, the best thing to do is just to kind of take the forfeit and, you know, and prepare for, uh, for our next opponent. And uh, did you guys use the extra time off from the game to go out and scout more? Or what, what I guess... Yeah. You know, what did you do differently or anything differently? You know, it, it was, uh, we didn't really do too much too different. Uh, you know, we spent a lot more time uh, just, just preparing for Sycamore. Um, you know, we actually had the, our, our opportunity to go watch them. They were, they were playing against the Ottawa. So, you know, a couple of our players and a couple of the coaches went over there to just kind of watch it because it's, it, it's a little different when you watch in, on, on huddle and, uh, you know, where you can actually see game-like speed. So, you know, we, 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 we took advantage of that. and. Um, we, we saw some good things that they that they did, and uh, uh, you know, so that, that's kind of uh, that's kind of what we did uh, this past week. Any concerns about maybe a slow start coming off a layoff, or you know, is it, you know, a road game too off a layoff? No, I, I, you know what, I think our young men are, are ready to go. I, I think they they've been itching to to, to uh, play this this team. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't. I, I, I think they're ready. <laughs> In my eyes, and what I've seen uh, th these last two weeks, uh, I, I just think they're ready to to uh, to uh, get out there and play Sycamore. And we talked about tonight. Tonight's opponent is Sycamore. It's a state-ranked team. It's the team that you guys didn't get to play in the spring. Both finished unbeaten in the spring season. Uh, as we talked about with Metamora and the Morrises and Caneland, Sycamore's right up there as well. Coach, I know just a great program. No, and you're right. It's, it's a very good program. It's a well-coached program. Um, they've got a lot of, uh, uh, they've had a lot of success the last couple of years, you know, as we talked about Morris's and, and the Canelands and the Metamoras and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great, it, it's a great opponent. It's a great uh, um, uh, opponent for us to, to just go out there and, and compete against. And, uh, you know, this is one of those teams that uh, we didn't get a chance to play last year, and, you know, I think, uh, as I said earlier, the, our kids are ready to go. What are you looking at as far as X's and O's from Sycamore? Are they a team that kind of blends in on uh, passing and running? You have to kind of prepare for everything? You know what, they do a lot of different things. They they, they go double tight, they go spread, they go empty. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different formations that we uh, have to prepare defensively. Um, 
you know, but I thought I thought uh, yesterday's practice was 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 pretty was pretty spot on. Kids were moving around. Kids were kids were doing what they needed to do to uh, you know just just in in our game plan that we've been uh, preparing them for. So um, offensively, I mean, uh, or defensively, they they run a three four. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to probably run a, still run a three four uh, defensively, and you know I think uh, offensively we're we're, we're going to do what we've done uh, these last couple weeks, and that's trying to grind it out and. Um, do what we can with our triple option offense and, and, and see what see, see what comes from it. I don't think, Coach. Obviously, you had the week off, so hopefully some bumps and bruises, more time to, to recover from that. How is the team looking on injury front? We're pretty healthy. We're pretty healthy. Um, you know, we still got some kids that are kind of uh, – a little sore, but I, I think uh, you know we, we feel we feel comfortable in in, uh, in in going into this full strength and, and ready to go. Well, I want to wish you the best of luck, Coach, and uh, let's go get those Spartans. All right, thank you very much. Thank you once again. That was LP head coach Jose Medina. When a play breaks down on the football field, you've got the rest of the game to make up for it. When something breaks down at home, you need prompt and professional service. That's why at Town & Country Services, their phones are manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to ensure that your problems and questions with plumbing, heating, and cooling are all taken care of promptly and professionally. Town & Country Services offer free estimates and affordable rates. Their licensed professionals and friendly staff have been a staple in the Illinois Valley since 1919. Give them a call anytime in Tonica at 815-442-3400. 415 or Princeton at 815 872 2200. All right, Jeremy Aiken. Uh, Jeremy Aiken back here along with the microphone. We have a video, of course, on our YouTube channel. Zach Shaw and Aaron Pelican up above us, high atop here on the uh, Sycamore press box. And uh, I think they made some improvements to the press box since we've last been up here. It's pretty nice for sure. We're actually in a, you know, we're in a suite now, Mike. I don't know if you saw that or not. We're I think it's a, yeah, suite, suite number two, two. yeah. So it's so. Very, very nice here. <laughs> I mean, compared to we, what we've seen in the past, this is yeah. definitely a, a paradise here. So we're ready, uh, almost ready for football. The Sycamore Band is out in the field. Let's go and give you the uh, coin toss. Tonight's coin toss brought to you by Hometown National Bank. Don't leave your financial future up to a coin toss. Let the folks at Hometown National Bank help. The home Sycamore Spartans won the coin toss, and they have chosen to defer. So that means the LP Cavaliers uh, will get the ball first to start this football game. Uh, let's talk about the weather. Uh, it's been kind of a uh, question mark for sure, the weather uh, before the game and uh, maybe during the game we might get some uh, sketchy weather. And uh, tonight's game time weather brought to you by Tana Country Services. Whether it's hot, cold, dark, or light, Tana Country Services is doing whatever it takes 24-7. Go to TanaCountryServices.com to find out more. And uh, partner, or yep. what do we, let's see if you could yes. do the honors and give well, us our weather we were, of the game. Uh, when we were driving up here, we were kind of questioning what was going to happen. The clouds uh, look pretty dark and whatnot. But uh, starting at game time, it's uh, going to be a nice 66 degrees um, going down to, you know, low 60s. And by 9 o'clock, they say a 42% chance of rain. Okay. So 9 o'clock, 42%. So, you know, we might catch the, uh, you know, end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, might a little rain. But hopefully no thunderstorms causing any lightning which would cause delays so yes we don't want that that's no. for sure uh, Jeff Perry, Buick Pontiac GMC, proud to sponsor the LP Keys to the Game. If you're looking for a new or used vehicle or need service, see why Jeff Perry customers come back again and again. Jeff Perry, Buick Pontiac GMC, and Rochelle Pru and online, too. I'm going to tease you with that because we're going to come back with the key to the game after these messages. We're going to take a break here from a Sycamore High School, LP Sycamore football coming up in moments.
Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back here at Sycamore High School as a uh, beautiful job done by the Sycamore Band doing uh, the national anthem, and they're playing the uh, Spartan Fight song now and heading off the field. I mentioned before the break are Jeff Perry's keys to the game. Um, Mike, defensively uh, for LP, keep on doing what you're doing. I know the defense has been uh, mighty strong for the Cavaliers this year. Of course, they pitched a shutout against Ottawa. Uh, gave up only two scores to Metamora, uh, two big plays, right. and that was it. Right. Yep. And Morton uh, had what was six points very going into the very fourth, uh, into the end of the game. Right. So, uh, but this is a Sycamore team that can put up some points. They like to spread you out, pretty balanced offensively and defensively. Uh, you look at their last three games, Mike. They've scored 46, 56, and 42 points. So, you know, the defense is going to have to step up, and I would say the offense is going to have to have some drives and, and help the defense keep right. the Sycamore offense right. off They're the field. They're going to take some time. The LP bread and butter of the game is the running game. So I think they have to really do that, be successful with Carrico and Trayvon Hunter, Ethan Bell. They have to run the ball in Woodfield, you know, obviously with uh, keep the mistakes to a minimum and uh, try to keep that Sycamore offense off the field. So those are our keys to the game. Yeah, this is a scary Sycamore team that can uh, put up points in a hurry, and LP doesn't want to get in a track meet. I don't think tonight against a team like Sycamore, LP uh, wanting to grind you out and uh, kind of wear you out in the second half with their big line. But uh, it'll be a test against the Sycamore Spartans. And we are ready for tonight's opening kickoff. And it's brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. Since 1885, Eureka Savings Bank has been proud to be a part of this community, helping people just like you. Eureka Savings Bank member FDIC. So, again, the Cavaliers... Uh, will receive as Sycamore won the uh, coin toss and deferred. Back deep for LP will be uh, Trayvon Hunter and Ethan Bell. I did see one Cavalier starter, Mike, who was not in uniform, and that was Tyler Robleski, oh. a wide receiver. I remember he went for a pass, remember, two yep. weeks ago and kind of came up. Yep. He, he got injured in the end zone, and uh, I believe he uh, kind of busted a part of his arm or something like that, so uh, he will not be playing tonight. And we open the game with a touchback. It goes over the head of Trayvon Hunter. So the LP Cavaliers will start the first drive of the evening at the 20-yard line of their own, of course. LP in their standard road uniforms with the green pants, white tops, green numbers with a red trim, green helmets. Sycamore with a gold shirt, gold pants, black helmets, and black trim. So we are ready for football. LP and Sycamore from Sycamore High. Uh, the freshman game was all Spartans. They win 35 to 8. Sean Whitfield under center for the Cavaliers to start this one. And they'll go left tackle. Carrico, who had a monster game against Ottawa over 200 yards, almost 250 yards. Carrico gets about three on that one. Off left tackle to be second down and seven for the Cavs at uh, their own 23-yard line. Yeah, I'd say Carrico is the definition of a workhorse back. Uh, he's just gained strength. He was big during the spring season, and he's just come back here, and he just really put on some muscle, and he's doing really well so far. Second down and seven for the Cavaliers. And Whitfield's going to keep it and be tracked down from behind. No gain on the play for Whitfield, making the tackle for K uh, Sycamore was Lincoln Cooley, a six-foot junior. And, again, he just tracked Whitfield down from behind to make the tackle. And LP looking, oh, they're going to get Whitfield one yard on the carry, actually, I guess. Pretty generous there. <laughs> Third and six. Yeah, really, really no gain to me. It looks like the ball spot at the 23. So third down and long for the Cavaliers. This is really not where the Cavs wanted to be in third and long here, nope. so hopefully this doesn't happen a lot during this game. They're going to fake the pitch to Trayvon Hunter. Whitfield going, going deep. deep over the middle for Ozzie uh, Hernandez, but he overthrew Hernandez there. Up he going for the home run. Early on, uh, Hernandez over the middle, but Sycamore had the coverage, and the pass goes incomplete, so the Cavaliers will go three and out. And a uh, quick punt to the Sycamore Spartans. Back to punt for the Cavaliers is Joey Shepard. And the two Spartan returnees, uh, Kalen Galto and Dawson Alexander, staying at about their own 45-yard line. Shepard inside his own 10. Uh, nice snap. Uh, whistle blows. Timeout LP. Oh, wow. 
So I don't know if the Cavaliers didn't have enough players, too many players. Or somebody on the Four, go. Four, six, eight, ten. They might have had 12 guys, Mike, so they got away with one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think they had 12 players on the field. The, the officials didn't see it. Yeah, they don't want to need a penalty here. Where, yeah. And uh, Sycamore's already looking to have a pretty good field position, so five yards would just uh, hurt them even more. So it's fourth down and uh, about seven to go. The Cavaliers look like they will have to punt it away on their first possession. Two short runs. Uh, one, uh, yeah, one uh, three-yard gain for Carrico, and no gain for Whitfield, and an incomplete pass. And the Cavaliers will be punting it away to the Spartans. Again, uh, Sycamore comes in at 3-1. and one. They open the season with their rivalry game. Neutral site lost 2016 to DeKalb. They then beat Oak Forest 46-8, to eight, doubled up Caneland, which is impressive, 56-28. And last week, a 42-6 win over Ottawa. Shepard standing inside of his 10-yard uh, line. And we're back in action. Joey's punt is a pretty good one. It's angling yeah, towards the uh, LP sideline. Yep, that's all right. So no return for the Spartans. They will have good starting field position just inside their own 50. Probably be spotted around you know, right at midfield, 48-yard line yep, of Sycamore. Yep. So some of the big names uh, for Sycamore looking at uh, their numbers this season. I'll get the uh, recap here. Their quarterback, Eli Meyer, 14 of 14 last week against Ottawa. Sam Carlson returned to kickoff and ran it for a 27-yard score. And starting out in a similar formation as uh, LP with a triple option, and they're going to run the jet sweep and a nice tackle. Oh, play. Cavaliers was burned for down. He ran the ball carrier down from behind. That was Sam Carlson, who I mentioned uh, had two big touchdowns last week against Ottawa. But great pursuit by Byron Verdun, and that's a loss of one yard. Second down and 11 coming up for the Sycamore Spartans as they tried a jet sweep. And uh, Cavaliers showing some speed on defense there. Well, the Cavalier defensive line and their linebackers have been the strength of their team yep. the last two seasons. So it's a great, uh, great show here on the first play. Second down and 11. Now Sycamore goes uh, with three receivers. They're going to show a lot of looks. They give it to the running back, and he runs right into the LP defender making the tackle was Antonio Rodriguez. It's a game of maybe three or four near midfield. Ball carrier was Nathaniel Altspeter. They mark it at the Cavalier, just inside the Cavalier, 49. So it's going to be third down and a short seven for Sycamore. 9.30 to go here in this game. We're just underway. No score. Spartans with four receivers. Trips to the right of their quarterback, Meyer. Elijah Meyer, he's going to straight drop back pass. He's in trouble. The pocket breaks down. Oh, it's by Rodriguez. And he's inside the 40 and hit the end of the 30. RP had two or three chances to tackle Meyer in the backfield. But man, did he prove uh, to be elusive. Eli Meyer with a big third down run at the quarterback spot. Gets it all the way down to the RP 30. First down Spartans. Yeah, that's Cavs had a really good opportunity to get him near the line of scrimmage and have very little gain, but he was able to juke past the linebacker and uh, gain 19 yards on that play. And Sycamore now goes in a bunch formation on offense. Yeah, they're going to show a lot of looks. They pitch it to the back. Will Doherty tracks him down from behind. That was uh, Zach Crawford. And uh, Meyer from the quarterback spot did a pitch and then acted as a lead blocker. Gain of four, second down and six. So, yeah, this is a... It's like an Andy Reid offensive playbook for Sycamore. I mean, well, they've been in the spread, the bunch, the triple option. And they have a lot of uh, athletes that can do yep. a lot of different things. So you're going to see probably a lot of different ball carriers and receivers catching balls and running today. Second down and six coming up from the Spartans are at the LP 26-yard line. And Meyer going to drop back and pass, throwing out in the flat. And oh, he just a shoestring catch. Yeah, he wasn't able to go anywhere after the catch was... Sam Carlson, but he did gain a few yards down to the 24-yard line of LP, so it'll be third down and four coming up for the Spartans. He's, uh, Meyer just kind of flipped it out there and it almost went incomplete. Nice catch by uh, Carlson, but he had to sit down on his uh, backside to make the catch. Yeah, there was no chance of uh, getting any additional yards there. Third and four coming up for the Spartans. Back under center is Meyer, the quarterback. And he's going to roll right. And he fumbles it. Fumble, fumble. 
Ball's on the turf, and let's see, he's got it. Sycamore looks like they fell on it. Yeah, I think Sycamore did recover that. Yeah, he loses a yard or two. Yeah, Meyer coughed it up. And it'll be fourth down. Quite a few subs come in for the Spartans. Let's see what they have in mind. I would think it's too far into LP territory to punt. Oh, they're going to try a long field goal. Man, do they got a kicker, huh? Yeah, it looks like number 45, Caden Lettuce. Lettuce. Yeah, they're going to... Six foot junior tight end. So it's gonna be about a forty four yard field goal. The the holder is at now thirty three. It's a forty three yard field goal for Sycamore. Snap is low, the kick is oh. up, and it is man oh man, it is good. That would have been good from fifty. Wow. Forty three yard field goal for the Spartans. But hey, if you're the Cavaliers, you you take it, you hold Sycamore two three after they started that drive just on their other side of uh Midfield, so a 43-yard field goal to get the scoring going from Lattice, Caden Lattice, and uh, Sycamore draws first play, but it's only three at uh, 6:47 to go here in the first quarter. Three nothing Sycamore, and the Cavaliers are getting the football back. We'll keep it right here. Again, the freshman game was uh, Sycamore winning 35 to eight over the Cavaliers, and uh, we'll. Start getting some scores to come in as the night moves along. Back deep for the Cavs will be uh, Bell and Hunter. Last time, uh, well, I guess we should have known by the old. Yeah, I was gonna say oh, this is a right totally right different Kansas. kicker, though. This isn't even in their field goal kicker now. Yeah, this is number four. Keeper Tarnaki, who <laughs> he kicked one well through the end zone on the opening kickoff. So uh, Sycamore's got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to kickers. Some uh, kicking specialists yeah. up north. 3-0 Sycamore over the Cavaliers. Cavaliers' first offensive uh, set was 3-0. It's a left-footed kicker, too. Oh. Now, this one's a score up, so it's returnable. Trayvon, oh, no. it gets by good. him and goes into the end zone for a touchback. So, Trayvon had a chance, but uh, just let it get by him. Well, that was bouncing around yeah. crazy, so he's probably good that he didn't touch it because <laughs> uh, he may have, you know, fumbled it or whatnot. So, Cavs are going to start at the 20 once again. First and 10 LP coming up. They tried one pass. They went deep for uh, Ozzy Hernandez, but it was incomplete. Sean Whitfield comes out with the play for the Cavs. Spartans... Decent size. I mean, by the look of it, they're not overly big on defense, which probably means they make up for it in their speed. Right. But uh, LP's line, much more imposing uh, than Sycamore as far as size goes. Uh, Whitfield's going to keep it, and Sean puts his head down, and he's going to get out to about the 23, maybe the 24 before he's pushed back. Not a bad gain on first down for the senior quarterback, Whitfield. Yeah, they give him four. No. Just shy of the 25-yard line. Yeah, speaking of size, I mean, obviously, uh, the offensive line, like you said, Aiden Van Duzer, 6'5", Creed McCormick, 6'3". Um, I believe, well, Gage Starkey's on a defensive line. Um, and then some of the other offensive linemen are big, too. So, yep. um, Cavs definitely have a little bit of size. Nicholas Belsky's out there. He's 6'2", yep. 250. He's, yep. Second down and six coming up for the Cavs. We're halfway through the first quarter. 3 nothing Sycamore. Whitfield's going to keep it again, and Sean's out. Oh, he got hit right in the shoulder. Ouch. He's okay, and he's close to the first down. Looks like they're giving it to him first down, so right. six-yard play. First down, Whitfield, as he took a hit right in the shoulder blade. I kind of winced just watching that. First down, uh, LP, their first first down of the evening as we're still early on. 3 nothing LP, uh, Sycamore over LP. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter here on 103.9 WLP. A week five. High school football course, a big showdown right here in the uh, Interstate 8 slash Kishwaukee River Conference. Yep, you never know these days. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll get right into the Kishwaukee River part of our schedule the next two weeks. Yes. With, uh, uh oh, there's an LP player that doesn't, not sure where he needs to go. And now we're back set up. And they go, Kaka, big hole for me, Kaka up the middle. And Matt is near first down. Wow. So despite some uh, confusion for LP, they go Carico right up the gut for a 10-yard gain out to the 41-yard line. That's what we saw a lot of Carico oh, in the yeah. last game against Ottawa. He was uh, running all over the field. First and 10, LP at their own 41-yard line. 
And this is what we like to see. I think Al, we said the key to the game was offense putting together some long drives, kind of lull the Sycamore crowd to sleep and uh, keep the Sycamore offense off the field. Yep. And Whitfield's going to give it right back to Carrico. Matt's trying to push forward, and he gets a couple. Nice effort by Carrico getting out to about the 43-yard line. Gain of two. It's going to be second down and eight for the Cavaliers. Yeah, that was a harder than two yards yeah. there. He was pulling a couple of Spartan defenders. Second down and eight coming up for the Cavaliers. Joe Ryan, the head coach of the Sycamore, Coach Jose Medina, head coach of the your Cavaliers. Second down and eight. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. Three nothing Sycamore. Walker will go in motion for the Cavs. Whitfield gonna run the option. Puts his head down and gets to the 45. Sean gets two on the play to bring up a third down and six. Alexander with the tackle for Sycamore. Yeah, that was tough for Woodfield. He just, the uh, defensive line for Sycamore has a lot of speed, so yeah. trying to get up to the outside is not easy. And he's, uh, Whitfield's taking some hits here early on. Third down and six. Let's see if the Cavaliers go to the air. They're 0 for 1 early on. Joey Story has checked into the game. Yeah, we really haven't seen him carry the ball at all no. this year. He's been more just uh, used as a blocker. And he will go in motion. Yep. Straight drop back for Whitfield. He's got plenty of time. Throwing towards the sideline. Oh! Thanks for running up for the catch, but he was hit hard. Yeah. And fouls incomplete. A clean hit by the second yeah. defender. He might have got the worst of it. He comes up limping a little bit. That was uh, Brody Armstrong. Trayvon had to hear the footsteps, I'm sure. And it goes incomplete. The Cavaliers are going to have to punt it away. But, uh, man, two passes and both downfield. Yep. So, uh, Whitfield and the Cavaliers being very aggressive in their passing game. At least as far as not so just dinking and dunking. Right. Yeah. Sycamore with some late substitutes. Maybe they thought LP or they forgot what down it was, perhaps. Shepard back to uh, punt it away for the Cavaliers just outside his 30. No rush for Sycamore. Joey gets away. Nice punt. And almost hits the Spartan defender. Nice oh, he's it up. He is, and the Cavaliers, nice job. Bringing him down inside the 20. Well, they're going to give him forward progress. Oh. Well, it's about the 22, actually. Still a nice change of uh, field there yep. on the punt by Shepard and the coverage by the Cavaliers. 3 0 Sycamore leading LP. 2.53 to go here in the first quarter. Sycamore uh, with a 43 yard field goal for the only score so far. And they uh, almost fumbled it away. Their quarterback put it on the turf, but the Spartans were able to recover. And a uh, big run, 30 35, jukes up the middle, and he's going to be hit from behind. And there was Carlson, who's got breakaway speed. And, uh, boy, he was tracked down from behind. Yeah, he was. That was Swain who brought him down. Man, Carlson showed uh, some moves there, and he gets it all the way out to the 48 of Sycamore, gain of 26. Yeah, he turned the corner there, and he was gone. Carlson, a uh, junior only. Or, no, he's a senior. And uh, they go off left tackle, go back to Carlson. And uh, he gets three, four yards inside L uh, LP territory. Hunter was in the area. Also for the Cavs, looked like uh, Byron Verdun. They'll give Carlson five. Second down and five coming up for Sycamore at the 48 of LP. Late substitute for LP is Caleb Burrell. Checking out is uh, Carter Walters. Obviously, they're playing different positions. Oh, yeah. It's a much smaller boy than... <laughs> yep, and Sycamore goes more wide open yep. now. Yeah, yep. three receivers set. Yep. And they hand it off to the first guy. Three, oh. to her first down and more. Inside the LP 40, and he barrels forward to the 35-yard line. Nathaniel Altbeater. And we're seeing the explosive uh, Sycamore offense right now. Two big runs. That one down to the Cavaliers 34-yard line. Yeah, another 14-yard run there. Ethan Bell will check out and in for the Cavaliers. 
is Ro uh, Warren Rowicki, big guy up front. As the Sycamore goes bunch formation in their offense. And they're going to hand it off first guy through. Oh, Bounces off a tackle of Chris Swain, and uh, Trayvon Hunter finishes him off. That was uh, Nathan Alpeter. And he gets it to the LP 30, so that's a gain of another four oh, to yards, five yeah. yards. Yep. Bell coming back in for LP. Rowicki checking out. Now Sycamore will spread him out again with three receivers, two to the right of Meyer, one to the short side who is left. I haven't really seen that. It's Sycamore the one little dump off pass. Right. Uh, they hand it off, and all Peter is tackled from behind, wrapping up um, up down low is Shepard. Yeah, he's a very patient runner. He just yeah. kind of just gets into the hole and just waits for an opening. So it'll be third and a long two for Sycamore. And looks like we're going to have time likely for one more play. There's 30 seconds left. Surprise, Sycamore does not have a uh, game or uh, play clock. Play yeah. clock, yeah. Third down and two. And they're going to go second man is Carlson, and he has stood up. Looks to be short. We'll see. He did stumble forward. Down at the bottom of the pile for the Cavs was Rodriguez. Looks like they're going to call him a first down there. Yep, they will move the chains. And got to think this will be it for the first quarter. Yep, Sycamore's coming to the sideline. Yep. We play the corner, and it's Spartans three, Cavaliers nothing. Sycamore will have it first and ten from the Cavalier 24, and we return on 103.9 WLPO. Spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Sugarland Reward Rate Rock after the game on 103.9 WLPO. Star Rock News. Talk and classic rock. Jamie Aiken, my quarterback here at uh, Sycamore and... 3-0, Spartans with the lead over the LP Cavaliers. Time to take our first look of the night at our uh, Subway School Board update. Brought to you by Subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. Early on, Mantino, 7-0 over Streeter. And uh, Bureau Valley up on Sterling Newman, 7-6. Again, the freshman score here, 35-6, Sycamore winning over the LP Cavaliers. So uh, back in action, first and 10 Sycamore at the LP 24 yard line as the team switch sides of the field. Meyer under center and there's a pitch. He turns it inside and gets it inside uh, the red zone. That looked like uh, the number 24, oh, number 10, Zach Crawford. And, uh, yeah, they use quite a few running backs, and he gets eight yards on that carry. Seven, maybe eight. Yep, looks like, looks like about eight. Second and two. So Sycamore inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. First time in there. They did not get in there their first drive. They just kicked a long field goal. And oh, he's got a big spot there. Oh, oh well, yeah. Fake. Good fake. Yeah, I thought maybe Carlson got it, but no, it was a different back. Oh, Peter. And uh, Mason Lynch, thankfully, did not fall for it like we did. But it's still a first down gain to the nine yard line of LP. So, first and goal, Sycamore at the LP nine yard line. So, uh, the Spartans with an impressive drive here as they have been getting uh, good yardage on each run. And they've got, you know, three, four running backs. Yeah. Doing, you know, every play they're changing. And there is a handoff, and Lynch makes a tackle, but the runner rolls forward. It was and number 40. Or is that number 10, it looked like? Yep, it was Zach Crawford, number 10, 10, 10 yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lynch made a, made the hit yeah, near the line of scrimmage, but uh, Crawford carried him down to the three-yard line of LP, so give him six yards on that carry. Second down and goal coming up for Sycamore at the LP three-yard line. 
Three nothing is the score. LP looking to turn Sycamore back here. Split eye formation now for Sycamore. And they give it off left tackle. I don't know. The, Did he? I was gonna say a ball. He said he's fumbled. Oh, yeah, they're gonna the, say he was down. And they're gonna say a, a touchdown. They're going from a possible fumble to a touchdown. So I think uh, Coach Medina might have to take the replay on that one. Well, unfortunately, we don't see it. Was that Carlson? I guess. They ran it in from. Well, we see a replay up there, but it's gonna be a big pile. No, I don't think he was down, but they made it recovered in the end zone. Yeah, you're right. I think the ball f yeah, fumbled, and Sycamore recovered it in the end zone, I guess. So that oh. goal is a break for the Spartans. A, a touchdown on the fumble recovery. Didn't quite see who got it. And the uh, kick is good. So we're going to go with a fumble recovery in the end zone for the first Sycamore touchdown at 10-14 of the second quarter. Again, didn't quite see who recovered nope. it in the end zone, but uh, bottom line is Sycamore leading the Cavaliers 10 to nothing. 10-14 to go here in the second quarter. So uh, we, we believe that uh, twice already Sycamore has put the ball on the turf, but unfortunately both times they've recovered the fumbles. Yep, LB just not, has not had the opportunity to uh, grab that ball. So we'll see if the LP offense can get on the board here. 10 0 Sycamore. Plenty of time to go in this ball game. Yeah, they definitely need to do something sustained here on their offensive side. Just even give the defense a little time to rest. Yep. Uh, but Cavs need to get their offense moving and uh, try to get some points on the board. So far, uh, Sycamore's had two touchbacks. And uh, doing the honors here will be uh, Kiefer Tarnaki. He didn't kick it all that deep. It just got away from Trayvon. Nope. nope, just rolled right past him. And here's the left-footed kicker. It's an end-over-end kick. And oh, what? LP players just kind of looked at each other and let it go. That was uh, Hernandez and uh, Trayvon. Oh, there's a flag flying. Uh-oh. Is it going to be a personal foul on LP? That's something we haven't seen this year. LP's been pretty good when it comes to keeping their composure. I know there was uh, well, the first game against Morton. They had a couple personal fouls on one play. But, yeah, there's a flag thrown. And Sycamore was clapping as if it's going to go against the Cavaliers. Dead ball on sportsmanlike. Okay. Oh, oh, no, offsetting. Offsetting. Okay. Okay. So no harm done. Okay. It must have been two yep. players. They were kind of yep. getting a little extracurricular there. No harm, no foul there. So at least the uh, Cavs will start at the 20. Third time, LP started to drive at their own 20. 10 nothing. Sycamore with the lead. Whitfield going to keep it. And Sean's got some pretty good yardage. Out to about the 26-yard line. Gain of five, maybe six on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, that was a good run on first down. Second down and four coming up for LP. 10-0 Sycamore, we're under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Triple option set once again for the Cavaliers. In motion is Trayvon Hunter. And uh, looks like another keeper by Whitfield. Yeah, right up the middle. Yeah, not much on that one. They have a big pile up. Let's see where they spot it after the maybe a two-yard gain. <laughs> Third and a long two, it looks like. Yeah. Mark it at the LP twenty-eight. So yep, third down and two coming up for LP. So let's see if they call Carico's number or maybe Whitfield will keep it again. Nine minutes to go. 10 nothing Sycamore. Whitfield trying the hard count. Sycamore not buying it yet. 
And right it looks like Sean just keeps it. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, he's sick of more. He's acting like they stopped him. I don't know. He had a late uh, He did have there. a late surge, but I think they're going to say he his forward progress had stopped. Yeah, they're marking it before the 30. Yeah, gain of one. So an interesting call here for LP. Uh, this would be a gutsy call to go for it in your own 29-yard line. But uh, right now, it looks like they are going to go for it. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting call there on uh, third and a long two to have Whitfield run right up the middle. So fourth down and one. Maybe LP will do a hard count, and if they don't get anything, call a timeout and punt. We'll see. We'll see what Jose Medina and the Cavaliers are thinking here. No, they're going to go for it. And there's Carrico. Matt's got the first down off yep. left tackle. That's a gutsy call there. Yep. Carrico gets a couple yards, if not three. First down LP, so mano a mano on that play. They went with Carrico off left tackle, and uh, that will move the chains. First down and 10 LP. They mark it uh, at about the 31, 32-yard line. Yeah, Coach Medina had his uh, faith in his offensive line on that play. So this Cavalier offense, they haven't put points up, but they've, you know, they've been eating the clock, taking the Sycamore crowd out of the game. Everybody's just kind of quiet right now <laughs> until that one because they knocked Carrico back in the backfield. Yeah, you're gonna yeah he's lost, there. tackled back about the 30-yard line. So a loss of a full one for Carrico. Second down and 11 for the Cavaliers. Counting down to seven minutes to go here in the first half. Pretty quick moving. There's been a lot of running. Uh, that's yep. why. And yeah, those two passes that the Cavs have uh, incomplete. Yeah. Sycamore had one, one completed pass. Yep, Everything one, else one, has one, been right. on the ground. Yep. Second down and 11 for LP. Straight drop back for Whitfield. Now he's going to oh, run. Oh, he's got a lot of space He's over got there. room in front of the LP sideline <laughs> and uh, going to get out to about the 35. So make it a manageable third down and about Mm, still about seven. Six, six or seven, seven, yeah. As uh, he ran out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Clock stops at 6.47 to go. Third down and six LP. He's going to get Trayvon Hunter involved. They look for Trayvon on one of the pass plays. Yep. Now well, he's in motion, so you he call this. He's in motion, and uh, they go Carrico. Yeah, it's and not going to do it. Nope. Carrico off right tackle gets yardage, but uh, not nearly enough for the first down. They mark it at the 39, gain of about four. This will be fourth down and two, so uh, one would think LP will be tempted again to go for it. Well, they did it uh, a little while ago, yep. so I don't know. It's just another gamble here. This one's a little longer, I believe. I believe each team has all their timeouts left. Keys LP wants to see how Sycamore is set up before calling this play. So here we go, LP at their own 39. Fourth and two. A hard count by Whitfield. And in motion is Hunter. They're going to pitch it to Trayvon. He's looking and nowhere close. Nope. He was pushed out of bounds into the LP sideline. Trayvon had nowhere to go. I think and he the lost a couple yards. Yeah, there. he did. Cavaliers will turn it over on downs. So Sycamore strung it out, and they did try to get Trayvon involved offensively. But uh, credit the Spartans, they were on to him yep. and pushed Hunter out of bounds on the short side of the field. So he had less room to run. Yeah, really. he didn't have a lot of room on that side of the sideline. So Cavs really uh, gambled there. Now Sycamore's got it at the 38 of the Cavs. First and 10, Sycamore looking to add to their 10 0 lead. Meyer's going to pass. Throwing deep. Has a oh. wide open touchdown. Wow. Carlson out of the backfield. 38 yards. It was just a matter of the ball getting to him. And how about that quick play ability for Sycamore? 38 yards. Meyer to Carlson. And there's that quick strike. Boom for Sycamore. And it is a 16 to nothing game. Boy. Meyer, 38-yard pass to Carlson, who was all alone behind the LP secondary. 
Yeah, that was way too easy for uh, him to catch that ball. He was wide open and uh, no calves within five, 10 yards. Low snap, but they're able to get the kick up and it is good. So we'll keep it right here. 17 uh, nothing Sycamore over LP, 5.42 to go. LP went for it on fourth down, lost yards, and then Sycamore came right out. One play, play action, and Meyer found Carlson for 38 yards. Remember last week against Ottawa, Meyer was 14 of 14 in that game. Hmm. Yep. And uh, so far he's perfect tonight, two for two, uh, and a touchdown. So Carlson is their big play guy. We found that out right away. And last week he had an 86-yard kick return and a 27-yard uh, touchdown run. So yeah, he's 28 got a is the game breaker. Speed. Yep. Back deep for LP is Hunter and uh, I believe Hernandez. They haven't been able to return one yet. Oh, no, yeah, they haven't had the chance to do anything. 17-0 Sycamore over the Cavaliers. 5.42 to go in the second. And Sycamore will get the ball, by the way, to start the second half. And Ethan Bell is going to take it at the 5, fumble it at the 10. Ethan gets a block, 15, hold on to the ball, Ethan, 20, and he's out to the 25. Waiting a long time yeah, to blow the whistle. Man, oh, man. Even the, the Sycamore coach, I think, was holding his hands up. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. No. He was wrapped up. So they're going to mark him out at about the 24-yard line. So not a bad return for Ethan Bell. No, he, you know, fumbled the ball a little bit at yep. when he got it. So good recovery. So let's see what the Cavs can do. They really need to uh, do something here. They cannot... I think they need to uh, change their playbook a little bit and try to open it up a touch. First and 10 LP. Actually, this is what their best starting field position. Yep. They've had three drives at their 20. This one's at their own 24 yard line. 17, nothing Sycamore. And oh, there's a look like Carrico off right tackle. And maybe got a yard. Second down and nine coming up for LP. Carrico had one decent run as far as yardage goes in the first quarter, as, uh, but other than that, he's been bottled up. Yep. I think that's been LP's biggest play was that Carrico run. Yeah, he gained 10 yards on that there play. There you go, yeah. Second down and nine after the one yard run for Carrico. LP uh, taking their time. There's no play clock, but the, the back official still, I mean, he's the one he's watching his watch. And he just said five seconds to snap it, it looks like. Whitfield, the pitch to Hunter. Trayvon turns it inside, and this time Trayvon's able to get some running room. Out past the 30, maybe to the 31, gain of six. Yeah, so six-yard gain for Trayvon Hunter. Yeah, third uh, long, long three. Yep. The market at the LP 31 yard line. Coming up on uh, the 8 o'clock hour. We're expecting a longer than usual halftime. It is homecoming for Sycamore. No rain yet, by the way. Let's knock out the off. Yep. Yep. Whitfield's going to run the option. Sean puts his head oh, down he's and. Going uh, backwards. Forward progress should get him out to about the 34. Short of the first down. Yeah, it's going to be about, about fourth and inches, fourth, it looks like. Yeah, very short one. So, got to think LP's going to go for it again. Maybe the Cavaliers will use their first time out here. They, you know, no need to take them into the uh, locker room with you. Yeah. 30 seconds, 33 minutes and 30 seconds with three timeouts. You might as well use one here and just get the play right. Right. Maybe try to, again, the hard count if it doesn't work. Let's see. Fourth and inches coming up for LP at their own 33 yard line. Hunter will go in motion and. Oh, I don't man, know. Man, they got stacked up again behind the line of scrimmage. Was that Trayvon that got the ball? Nope, that was Whitfield. And know, LP guess. stopped again on a fourth down. Yep. Wow. So Sycamore's defense showing their prowess here. Hmm. 
Two straight times they've been challenged by LP and they've answered the call. And now the Spartans again have the ball deep in LP territory. First yeah. and 10 at the Cavalier 33 yard line with 3.03 to go, plenty of time. Yeah, they started last drive at the 38 and you saw what happened. So. Yep. Under center is Meyer and they're gonna pitch it. And a nice hit by Lynch who uh, has a couple teammates helping him out. And the ball carrier there was Zach Crawford. Gain of two. Be second down and eight. Yeah, Sam Carlson is five foot seven, but uh, just explosive. Mm. Almost uh, you lose him in the huddle. Yep. Now he's going to line out as a wide receiver. Trayvon Hunter has the task of uh, guarding him on defense. And quarterback keeper for Meyer. Runs into a couple LP defenders. Off the left side. Looked like Swain was in there. So Swain will get the tackle. Third down and five now. This is a big, big play here for LP if they can stop Sycamore. Sycamore is in field goal range. I would say so for sure. Crazy to say that, but they are. Three receivers set, Meyer back in the pistol here. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Meyer gonna look left and roll right. He's got time throwing towards the sideline, oh. it's caught. Uh, pretty smooth catch yeah. by uh, Jacob O'Donnell and Ethan Bell with a tackle, but Sycamore completes a third down pass and they're inside the LP 20 at the 19 yard line. So uh, Sycamore, Back inside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Yeah, that was a 6'4 senior receiver. Uh, very smooth, like you said. Cavalier is going to take a timeout. Let's take one as well. Be right back. It's Sycamore 17, LP nothing, 146 to go in the first half. Farmers, as you enter harvest season, harvest is the time when most farm accidents happen. Please make sure to include safety in your plans. Your ag partners at Corteva AgriScience remind you to slow down, take all safety precautions to help ensure you have a safe harvest. Corteva AgriScience is dedicated to helping you protect your yield, your land, and the world's food supply because they know when farmers succeed, everyone wins. To learn more, visit them online at Corteva.com today. We're your financial plus. These days, more than ever, you're worried about a lot of things you can't control. Luckily, when you bank with Financial Plus Credit Union, your bank account won't be one of them. Financial Plus uses powerful tech to keep your finances safe, including debit and credit card control. If you think your card is lost or stolen, you have the ability to turn your card off instantly with just the push of a button, saving you time and peace of mind. It's all part of Financial Plus's steady art tech to help you easily manage your finances. Mobile banking, smartwatch banking, mobile check deposits, and mobile payments are all available when you bank with Financial Plus. Plus and download the mobile app. Start taking advantage today with Financial Plus Credit Union with locations in Ottawa, Peru, Mendota, Morris, or Diamond, or online at financialplus.org. Financial Plus Credit Union is member NCUA. You can rely on us. We belong to you, and that's the plus. We're your Financial Plus. Take us to the game and wherever you go, download the free 1039 WLPO app today. And we're back here. Yeah, we're back. Carlson gets the ball off left tackle. Give him two yards for Sycamore. Second down and eight. And here's a pitch inside to Crawford. He fumbles it. And, get man, they recover it again. Crawford, hmm. Crawford put it on the turf, but it bounced right up to him. And he got near a first down. Man, three fumbles all recovered by Sycamore. This game yep. would be a lot different. Uh, not saying LP would have been on the board yet, but Sycamore wouldn't have had 17. We're under a minute to play. Sycamore's really in no here a hurry here. Third down and one at the Cavalier 10. Oh, runner and foul, it looks like. First man through. And they're going to all Peter, and uh, he might have lost a yard, Mike, or no, yep. no gain. Clock's rolling. And uh, fourth down and one now at the 10. Yeah, coaches. Oh, and foul. he draws LP offside. <laughs> Almost, man, Sycamore just kept their composure. Yep. And LP did not. 
Yeah, that's probably the first time they've uh, gone on two, and yeah. LP just couldn't hold back. So it was fourth and one, and Sycamore will get the first down. First and goal now at the five-yard line for the Spartans. 29.3 seconds to go in this first half. Meyer under center. And he's going to pitch it to Crawford. Breaks a tackle. And no indication yet. Touchdown. He took it a while to get it, but that is a two-yard touchdown run for Zach Crawford. Or uh, five-yard, right? Yeah, yep, five-yard. Five yard, yep, five-yard run. With uh, only 20 seconds to go in this first half. So it's been all Sycamore after LP's defense uh, held him to a field goal to start this game. Spartans with three scores in this second quarter and they lead now 23 to nothing. And here is the extra point coming up for the Spartans. And remember, they get the ball back. Uh -oh. oh, Cavalier ran into the kicker. They get the ball back <laughs> at the third quarter. Uh, I assume LP probably jumped offside. Yeah, he must have been offside. And let's see if Sycamore could make LP pay and say, well, all right, we'll go for two now. The kick was plenty good. So let's see what the Spartans do. It'll be half the distance to the goal line. You're listening to LP Football on 103.9 FM, 1220 AM, WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. 23 nothing Sycamore. Yeah, you would think he would just decline that. I don't know, unless he, like you said, wants to go for two. Yeah. They're talking about it. I think Sycamore's probably wondering why there wasn't a ru running into the kicker. Mm -hmm. I would assume that's why. I don't know why else they would be taking this much time. Their coach, Joe Ryan. And uh, let's see, Meyer is out there. No, he's got a time. He's calling. Yeah, time he's calling a timeout to think about it here. He doesn't look. I happy. think he's just wanting to talk to the head and official. That's all right. he wants. He said uh, he told his coaches, his assistant coaches, to talk to his players, and uh, their coach just wants a word with uh, the referee, the head right. official. Yep. Twenty-three, nothing. Uh, clock stopped. Twenty point seven seconds to go here in the first half, and uh, coming up, we'll have the same Argus Health halftime show. And uh, we'll get a Subway scoreboard update. We'll have a uh, second half adjustment brought to you by Abacus, Ta Abacus Tax Service. And uh, we'll also have uh, Mike tell us what's all going on at uh, LP this weekend. And we'll uh, take a look at Sycamore High School and uh, the town and uh, some famous alumni for the Spartans, including a Super Bowl winner and a current Super Bowl winner. Yep. And I do remember calling at least one of his games. I came in here when I was covering Ottawa. Mm. And uh, there was actually, he had a younger brother that played. So I'm, not try, I'm trying not to give it away yet. So. <laughs> it's a pretty big name here in Sycamore. Plays for the Chiefs. We'll leave it at that. No, it's not Patrick Mahomes. 23-0. Uh, They're going to go ahead and I would assume go for two. They will. Yep. In the backfield is Alt Peter and uh, Crawford. And they hand it off up the middle, and he's going to be stuffed. Yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, no good. Nice job by uh, the big guys up front for the Cavaliers. Swain was there. And uh, also there for the Cavaliers was uh, Rowan uh, Warren Rowicki. So Sycamore, that's the only thing they've done wrong so far tonight is not just take the point. And uh, they go for two and get uh, greedy, I guess, but who can blame them? Yeah, from half a distance. Right, half a distance. right. 23 nothing Sycamore over LP. Uh, Cavaliers probably looking at one play after this kickoff. Yeah, I'm sure they won't be uh, super aggressive once they get the ball. Again, this is a Sycamore program that's fifth in 5A. They were 6-0 in the spring season and uh, their only loss this year was to DeKalb 20 to 16. The score that really stands out to you is the fact that they doubled up Caneland 56 to 28. And here comes the rain. See that if you look into the light fixtures, it's uh, oh, yeah. rain, yep. raining pretty good out there. Yes it is. So a steady rain falling now at Sycamore. 
Here's the uh, end over end kick, and uh, LP's just going to let it go in the end zone once again for a touchback. And we'll start to see if uh, I see some umbrellas coming out. See if even some uh, press box may get a little more crowded here in a second. <laughs> Bands out with their coats. So we thought there'd be rain, and uh, we got it right about the 8 o'clock hour. 23 nothing, and uh, I don't think the Cavaliers will break out uh, an 80-yard play here in their playbook. So let's see if they just go Carrico or Whitfield. And they will just go Carrico, who spins ahead and uh, got maybe a yard, and that's going to be it for the first half. Big second quarter for Sycamore, 20 unanswered, well, obviously 23 unanswered points for the game, but uh, 20 points, three touchdowns here in the second quarter as the rain falls now at Sycamore High School. So we played a half, and uh, the Spartans are uh, the real deal. They lead the LP Cavaliers 23 to nothing. We'll come back and start our uh, St. Margaret's Health halftime show after this. You're listening to LP Cavalier Football on 103.9 WLPO and also watching via webcast on our Star Rock Media YouTube channel thanks to Grazers Plumbing and Heating. 23 to nothing, Sycamore leading the Cavs back with some halftime coverage after this. Dravet Syndrome and Epilepsy Awareness Walk October 9th at Baker Lake. The money raised will help the Epilepsy Efficacy Network and Dravet Syndrome Foundation and local families. Find out more at dsawareness.com. Fuel your day with one of Subway's new protein bowls. It's your go-to footlong, but in a bowl. Throw any of your favorite footlongs into a bowl with the same portion of meat, fresh veggies, cheese, and sauce, just without the bread. Trade chicken bacon ranch, meatball marinara, or this bacon cheese. Add your favorite fresh veggies to the mix, and it all adds up into a packed protein bowl. Go pro with double the meat for only $3 more. Get it all at your local subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Oglesby, Ottawa, or Marseilles. You can get pretty banged up playing football if you're not careful. And sometimes, no matter how careful you are, your car gets banged up due to an accident. If you've had an accident, LaSalle Body and Fender will help you score the best deal in auto body, fender, collision, and dent repair. LaSalle Body and Fender's been in the Illinois Valley providing excellent auto repair for three generations. And they work with all insurance companies. When your car gets banged up, call LaSalle Body and Fender, and you can call them for 24-hour towing, 222. There's a lot going on right now, and broadcasters are on the ground covering all of it, bringing you the weather, the traffic, and breaking news, all while entertaining you 24 hours a day. Someone needs to tell you what's going on around the world and in our hometown, and that someone is us. We are free radio. We are always there. We are broadcasters. Visit wearebroadcasters.com or text radio to 52886 to learn more. Furnished by NAB in this station. The Hall Township Food Pantry has figured out a way to be of service to those needing food 24 hours a day. They have a free little pantry right outside their offices at 500 North Terry. Hall Township Food Pantry slogan, take what you need, give when you can. This is where you go when you need to know. 103. WLPO. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter back here at Sycamore High School as the rain falls. It is 23 to nothing, Sycamore over LP. And uh, we kick off our uh, St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Stay on top of your game with help from St. Margaret's Health and Dr. Shin. He's the Illinois Valley's only doctor certified in both orthopedics and sports medicine. 23-0 Sycamore. Here is the uh, scoring summary in the first uh, half. Uh, Sycamore got on the board at 647 of the first quarter, a 43-yard field goal by Caden Lattice, and uh, it would have been good for 50-plus. That was it for the first quarter scoring, 3 nothing. Sycamore caught a big break at 10-14 of the second. They uh, fumbled the ball into the end zone and uh, couldn't really tell which Spartan recovered it, but it was good enough for a touchdown, and the kick was good. Then at 5.42 of the second quarter, after LP got stopped on a fourth and short in their own territory, Sycamore struck on one pass play. Uh, Eli Meyer, the quarterback, found uh, their speedster, Sam Carlson, behind all the LP defenders, and he pretty much walked in from 38 yards. The kick was good. And then with 20 seconds to go in the uh, second quarter, a five-yard touchdown run for Zach Crawford 
Uh, Sycamore went for two and the Cavaliers stopped him. So there you go. That's the scoring summary, 23-0. Sycamore, uh, no turnovers. Now Sycamore has three fumbles on the night, but uh, they recovered all three of them. So uh, that's a look at your scoring and penalty summary. And Mike, obviously uh, stats wise, uh, not a lot there for the Cavaliers in the first half. No, the Cavaliers really haven't been able to do much on offense. Uh, Whitfield did have uh, that one incomplete pass, no yards, uh, of course, passing. Uh, Carrico had 22 yards rushing. Whitfield ended up with 30 minus any sacks. And um, Trayvon Hunter had six yards uh, rushing there. So as far as offense goes, that's really about it as far as offensive stats. Uh, on Sycamore's side, they did, Sycamore had 120 yards rushing. And they were also three for three passing with uh, 50 yards and uh, at least that one touchdown. So, uh, you know, the Cavs defense really needs to do something. I mean, the only thing I can say on the offense, uh, they did uh, succeed on one third or fourth down fourth out of down, five. Yeah, yeah so uh, one for five on, in that <laughs> respect too. So not a lot of uh, good offensive stats so far with the Cavs. All right, and uh, to give the defense a little bit of a, a slide, obviously what Sycamore's last two drives yes. started on the LP side of the football field, so. Yeah, they've had very good field position. Yeah. Obviously, to start the game, right. Sycamore had it on their own 49-yard line. Yep. Um, that second drive, they were on the 22, um, and then they had that field goal, and then other than that, they've been starting in LP territory. So, yeah, the, the Cavs defense have definitely had a difficult time because of that, uh, that fact, for sure. 23 uh, nothing. the Cavaliers find themselves uh, down big. Uh, their only loss this year was Metamora, and that was a game where they lost just by uh, one touchdown, and uh, they lost uh, late in that one in the third quarter and had many chances to win that right. one. So this is the first real big adversity for the Cavaliers as far as trailing by uh, 23 points, three scores at Sycamore. We'll take a break. We come back. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on this weekend at LP High School and delve into uh, some famous alums for the Sycamore Spartans. We'll also have a Subway scoreboard update. You're listening and watching Cavalier Football on a 103.9 WLPO and on our Star Rock Media YouTube channel. So far, unfortunately, it's all Sycamore. 23-0 over your Cavaliers on 103.9 WLPO. Bo uh, back with more of our uh, St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show after this. The main concern is the safety of their patients and the communities they serve. To assure this, St. Margaret's is now offering telehealth patient visits so you can stay safe at home and visit your doctor virtually on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Telehealth is easy and safe. You simply have to download an app that you can find on St. Margaret's website. Visit with your doctor wherever you are with telehealth. Now available from St. Margaret's Hospital. Find out all you need to know about St. Margaret's telehealth at aboutsmh.org. Bill Walsh Automotive, a proud sponsor of tonight's Drive of the Game. While a great drive is important in football, Bill Walsh knows what you drive is crucial to your home team. From work and school to the big game, you need a dependable ride that will get you and your team where they need to be safely, on time, in comfort, and style. Find your perfect drive right now at BillWalsh.com. And keep listening for tonight's Drive of the Game. It's brought to you by Bill Walsh Automotive and BillWalsh.com, where you can find your next drive without doing any driving. At all. Ever feel your financial company is more about them than you? Or focus on profits than customer service? That is not the case at the Illinois Valley Credit Union. At IVCU, the focus is on you. Illinois Valley Credit Union is in the business of helping you realize your dreams with low interest loans that best match your financial needs. Get the lowest rate when you finance or refi your car, motorcycle, or RV with IVCU. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle Bureau or Putnam Counties, you can become an IVCU member. See more at IVCU.com with the emphasis on you. IVCU member and CUA. Hi, this is John with Elite Seamless Gutters out of Spring Valley. If you need seamless gutters, call Elite Seamless Gutters in Spring Valley. Your one-stop shop for seamless gutters, gutter guards, soffit, fascia. We offer three different sizes of seamless gutters, 5-inch, 6-inch, and 7-inch. And the reason we offer three different sizes of seamless gutters is we want to put the right size gutter on your home today. So call Elite Seamless Gutters at 663-8364 and get your gutter job done today. We take pride in doing the job right the first time. We want to keep the water out of your basement, so we will put the right size gutter on your home. Our prices are excellent, our service is top-notch, and we will do the job right. 
call Elite Seamless Cutter, 663-8364, and get your seamless cutter job done today. That's Elite Seamless Cutters in Spring Valley, 815-663-8364. Bojo's Harvest Craft Show, September 25th and 26th. Over 100 vendors, live music, kid activities, and more. Working is free and admission is only $8. Get your pumpkins and more, September 25th and 26th at Bojo's Orchard, Harvest Craft Show in Granville. Tired of asking mom and dad for money? And so are they. Well, McDonald's in Spring Valley, Princeton, and Mendota want to help. McDonald's has immediate openings for full and part-time positions on all shifts. Apply in person at the Spring Valley McDonald's on Route 6 in front of Hall High School, at the Princeton McDonald's on North Main just off I-80, or the Mendota McDonald's. Make sure you ask about all the benefits. Oh, and be sure to try one of their new crispy chicken sandwiches. Locally owned and operated, McDonald's is an equal opportunity employer. The Illinois Valley and Star Rock Country wake up with Rod and Tom. Mornings on 103.9 WLPO. Star Rock Rock News, talk, and classic rock. And we're back. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter as we continue our St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Uh, it is Sycamore 23, LP nothing. And uh, let's first uh, talk about what's going on, Mike, with uh, LP this weekend. Of course, uh, last weekend of September. And we're officially, uh, you know, we started fall sports, obviously, when the school year started. But we're officially in fall of the calendar year. Uh, what all we got going on this weekend? Yeah, we're definitely knee-deep in uh, fall activities uh, this weekend for sure. Um, uh, the, bar the boys' varsity golf team is going to be playing at the Mendota Invite uh, tomorrow morning. Um, the Lady Cavs uh, girls' varsity tennis invite is going to be at home at the uh, sports complex. The boys' and girls' varsity cross-country team are going to be at the Rock River Run in Sterling. I do remember that from my days as a cross-country dad, uh, that race uh, along the river there in Sterling, so that's a good uh, meet for them. Uh, the girls' sophomore volleyball team is playing in Rock Falls at the Rock Invite. Uh, the girls' red team, the Frosh freshman volleyball, is going to be in Byron. Um, and the girls' green team is going to have a quad at the East Gym, uh, an LP home quad for the girls' green team Frosh volleyball. And the actual marching band is going to have the Morton Band invite down at Morton High School. So I know they've been uh, rehearsing for that uh, for quite some time. So That'll be a big invite for the uh, marching band. So all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> they're definitely going around. Yeah, for the you know LP football is on the road tonight as well. So gonna have to hit the road to see most of uh, the Cavalier action. Yep, and then this obviously weekend. we've got the JV team for uh, LP right. gonna be playing on Monday night at home at 5:30. I know there's been some questions on the time, the start time of that game, but uh, the JV game will be at 5:30 on Monday. All right, uh, and it'll be at Howard Fellow Stadium. And uh, we'll be back there next Friday night for homecoming. Should be a lot of fun as the Cavaliers will welcome in uh, Woodstock North as the next two weeks. So uh, we'll get into the Kishwaukee River part of our conference with uh, Woodstock North at home, and then we'll hit the road to uh, Woodstock High in week number seven. And, uh, of course, tonight we're here in Sycamore, uh, home of the Spartans. Uh, very uh, good football program each and every year. I mean, they are a football school, but they're pretty solid in other sports as well. But uh, when you look at their famous alums, Mike, uh, football does definitely dominate it. Yeah, they have, uh, as far as, on, of course, this is Wikipedia, so we have to yep. take that with a potential <laughs> grain of salt. Um, but we have uh, Ben Neiman. Yep. He is a current linebacker for the NFL's Kansas City Chiefs. Yep, if uh, you he, watch the Chiefs, you'll yep. see him. He's a he, pretty good player. Yeah, he won a Super Bowl. He was yep. actually an undrafted free agent wow. out of Iowa. Yep. So uh, University of Iowa, He, uh, I don't know what position he plays. Uh, he plays linebacker, linebacker I believe, okay. yeah. Oh, linebacker, yep. yeah. So yep. uh, basically, yeah, so he's on the – Chiefs and won a Super Bowl last year. Uh, Nick Neiman, younger brother, younger brother. He was a linebacker for NFL's uh, the Los Angeles Chargers. So we've got two Neiman brothers yep. uh, playing uh, linebacker in the NFL. And Mark Johnston was a former NFL quarterback. 
cornerback. Okay. So we've got three uh, NFL players from Sycamore, and obviously, like you said, the uh, football history here at this uh, in this field is uh, pretty good. So uh, pretty impressive to have three uh, pros playing right now or former pros. Right. I took a quick look just to make sure if there was a Neiman on the roster. Uh, there is not one currently. I'm sure we would have called the Neiman name by now probably, if there was. Probably. On the uh, varsity roster. But uh, yeah, I remember Ben Neiman for sure calling some of his games. And uh, yeah, he went to Iowa. And uh, wow, it's tremendous to be go from an unsigned or undrafted. Yep, And uh, now be a Super Bowl champion and a mainstay on the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, pretty cool as uh, Sycamore uh, alumni there uh, on Sundays in the NFL. Sycamore marching band out in the field now. And uh, let's take a look at our subway scoreboard update, shall we? And uh, some games underway. There's some games tomorrow, too. But, uh, yeah, subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. You can enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. And uh, do we got some new scores, Mike? I haven't any, nothing uh, recent. I mean, basically Princeton and Kiwani were tied 14-14 in the second quarter. Um, Bureau Valley was leading Newman at one point. Again, but that's a early score. Um, and that's really all I had. They, I haven't gotten any updates on Twitter here. Let's see. I think I got a new updated Princeton score. 27-27. Wow. Wow. Uh, Princeton and Kiwani in a uh, heavyweight battle there. Let's see. Let's see if there's any other scores here. Yeah, I wonder what the weather is like down there. Yeah, I don't know. We had a, a soccer score from today. LP beat uh, the Depew Hall co-op 2-1 to one okay. in uh, boys soccer. So congratulations to the LP Cavaliers. We had an Ottawa score earlier. Streeter Mantino. Uh, last check, Mantino up 21 0 over Streeter. That game now in the uh, second quarter. Ottawa again playing one of the Woodstock schools tonight. Yeah, I think it was Woodstock North, maybe. They were winning at one point, like you said. And uh, up 7 to 7. Okay. Last check, heading into halftime, seven to seven between Ottawa. And uh, let's make sure which Woodstock school it is. It's the Thunder. Uh, that would be Woodstock North Thunder. Okay. Hopefully we don't have any Thunder here. No, no. Looks like it uh, may have stopped raining. I don't really see any rain hitting the tarp. Uh, oh yeah, or no, Sycamore. I don't see anything in the lights either. Yeah. So, so 23, oh, we got a score on the other side. Uh, Sandwich, who sat out two games because of COVID, uh, getting back to playing Richmond Burton, oh, oh. who is a state power. I know easily about a 3A, 4A school, I would yeah, I say. Yeah, they won a state title last yeah. year, two years ago. They're up on Sandwich 48 to nothing, so they'll have a running clock uh, in the second half of uh, that game. So we continue the St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Let's take a break, and uh, we come back. We'll give uh, you our second half adjustment. Definitely going to have to make some adjustments if you're the LP Cavaliers down big at half, 23 to nothing. You're listening to Cavalier Football on 103.9 WLPO. With the Voluntary Action Center by delivering meals to homebound seniors and disabled individuals. They'll teach you what you need to know. Please call 815-758-3932. This week, Time Warp thinks about the children. children at your feet. You like children? I do if they're probably cool. Plus, we sing a cappella. It's all about the kids and more this week on Time Warp. Don't miss Time Warp this weekend, brought to you by Cremarsa Glaw on 103.9 WLPO. Along the banks of the Illinois River at the north end of town, Peoria Woodruff opened in 1937, replacing Keenan and before that Averyville, which was annexed into Peoria in 1927. The Warriors had competitive teams in many sports, including boys basketball, which went to the state tournament three times and were second to Centralia at the Pontiac Holiday Tournament in 1941, en route to a 23-5 season. Baseball finished second at the 1940 
57 state tournament and won four district titles while boys cross country won state in 1952 and were in the top 10 at state eight times in 10 years. There were other successful sports at Woodruff as well, but why not find out more online on the website Illinois High School Glory Days. I'm site author Kel Varney and we've got plenty of information on Peoria Woodruff and close to 1,200 other schools in Illinois that have since closed their doors. Facts, figures, history, and so much more. Come check us out today at IllinoisHighSchoolGloryDays.com at 1039 WLPO. Still hearing the school bells, even though the schools are gone. Are you planning and scheduling that elective surgery that you put off? It's just as important to plan your post-surgery rehab. Planning ahead usually makes things easier and more successful. Hi, I'm Louane Hewitt from Heritage Health Peru. Restore Therapy at Heritage Health provides comprehensive therapy offering PT, OT, respiratory, and speech therapy. Our focus is to restore you back home quickly and safely, and with our private suites, you'll be comfortable during your short stay at Heritage Health Peru. See more now at heritageofcare.com. If failing to meet the rent is becoming a regular thing, well, the state of Illinois has financial assistance. Go to IHDA.org, IHDA.org, and look for the Illinois Rental Payment Program. They offer financial assistance. At a time when misinformation is all too common on social media, we take great pride in bringing you the news that matters, that impacts your family, news you can trust. Local broadcast journalists bring you the facts, Covering the stories breaking in our community and across the globe. Text RADIO to 52886 and let Congress know you depend on local journalism. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Listen wherever you go. FM 1039, AM 1220. Streaming at Classic Hits 1039WLPO.com. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter back here as uh, both teams are now out of the locker room and back on the field uh, stretching it out. And uh, 23-0, Sycamore over LP. And uh, time now for our uh, second half adjustment. Second half adjustment is brought to you by Abacus Tax and Accounting Services. Keep your business winning with Abacus Tax and Accounting Services. You can find out more at abacustaxsv.com. And... uh, you know, the scoreboard pretty much tells you, Mike, uh, zero points. You're not going to win any football games. And uh, I know it's easier said than done against a team like Sycamore. But uh, Cavaliers, whether or not they maybe try to open it up a more, I know the, that's not their thing. They like to grind it out with a triple option. But uh, going to have to try to get uh, some drives going and get some points on the board. Yeah, they're going to have to figure something out to uh, topple this uh, Sycamore defense because they've been all over their running game. So I don't know what uh, Medina, Coach Medina had during the uh, halftime talk, but hopefully the Cavs can get something going. Obviously, they're going to be starting on defense to uh, start the third quarter. So I think that's uh, important that they do not let Sycamore score any points uh, or that's just going to put the Cavs in a deeper hole than they're already in. And then once their offense gets on the field, they got to do something. So that is our second half adjustment. Uh, yeah, LP's going to have to get uh, some sustained drives, get some points on the board, and this opening drive will be big to try and make uh, Sycamore punt uh, to the Cavaliers. I'm trying to think, uh, has Sycamore punted tonight? I uh, don't Their opening so. drive, they kicked Maybe. a field goal. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they have punted tonight. No. Don't believe so. So, and it's, you know, it's not like it, uh, they've dominated the LP defense by any means. No, they've had great field position, right. honestly. I mean, right. their worst was that uh, when they were back in with the 24 kind of thing. So, yep. uh, other than that, they've been pretty close to midfield, if not in the Cavs territory. We're going to take one final break, and when we come back, we should be ready for the uh, second half kickoff. Sycamore leading LP 23 0 back with Cavalier football right after this. Looking for you. L.W. Schneider's hiring for all shifts, full and part-time, with additional hours available. No experience? No worries. L.W. Schneider will train you. Unemployment benefits are running out. Start your career today with a proven local leader. Be part of a creative, collaborative, diverse team with excellent benefits. Go to lwschneider.com slash careers or call Wendy at 815-875-3835. L.W. Schneider's an equal opportunity employer. 
looking for a great way to introduce your children to the concepts of savings and money management? Look no further than Eureka Savings Bank with our Money Miners Kids Club. Hi, I'm Mike Porter. It's never too early to begin a financial education with your children. Let us assist you by making it fun and easy to save while building confidence and security in your children as they are provided opportunities to learn about all banking services. Start them off on the right track financially with the Money Miners Kids Club at Eureka Savings Bank, member FDIC. These are a couple of great teams, but the real super groups, like ACDC, Death Leopard, and Journey, play after the game. 1039 WLPO, Star Rock News, Talk, and Classic Rock. Jeremy Aiken and Mike Porter back here at uh, Sycamore High School, and uh, we are about set for the second half, so that means we are wrapping up our St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Stay on top of your game with help from St. Margaret's Health and Dr. Shin. He's the Illinois Valley's only doctor certified in both orthopedics and sports medicine. So, again, uh, Sycamore won the hometown National Bank coin toss, and they chose to defer, so uh, they will get the ball. And the Cavaliers will be kicking, I believe, if my, my direction's right, east to west here uh, at Sycamore High School. May have to utilize the good old compass. That, uh, if I'm not turned around, I could be wrong, but... Uh, I don't know. Right to left. Going, uh, yeah, right to left. Right to go, left yeah. on the good old radio dial. For those of you still with uh, radio dials and boom boxes and so forth, stereo. 23 to nothing, LP trailing. And uh, kicking off for the first time tonight will be uh, Joey Shepard. Yeah, we've seen him do a couple punts, and he's done right. pretty well with the yeah. punting game. Yep. So uh, we know uh, Joey's got quite a leg there, so we'll see what he can do. Uh, to uh, halt a uh, big return here. So here is the approach by Shepard. And an end over end kick. It's going to bounce at about the 18 yard line. They're about 12. Oh. oh, almost a close line, but the missed tackle. And there goes the Sycamore player, 35 40. Turns it inside 50. One man to beat, and he's going to be tackled out of bounds. Wow, nice return, uh, making the tackle look like uh, Ethan Pohar. Yeah, Caden Galto, we've not called his name, wow. so uh, there's another star player potentially for Sycamore. Well, he was almost uh, clotheslined yeah. at the start, yeah. but uh, he turned it into a huge run on the kick return. That's the last thing LP wanted, and Sycamore will start this drive at the Cavalier 35-yard line to start the second half. Sycamore on homecoming, entertaining their uh, home crowd in a big way. What? The what whistle it? blew. And uh, both teams acted confused. There was no flags. Yeah, I don't think they should uh, give Sycamore another shot here. First and ten, I mean. So, yeah, they're going to let them redo it. I, I don't think that's right. The LP played through. And yeah. So, we'll act like that didn't happen. Oh, nope. First and 10, Sycamore at the LP 35-yard line. 23-0 is the score. Let's see if the Cavalier defense can come up with a, a turnover. They've come close a few times tonight. Yeah, and the Cavs defense have been their strength of the year so far. So, Alta Peter with the carry. Swain and Lynch were there for the Cavaliers. Swain's been pretty active. I mean, he could maybe be our leader. We haven't uh, called his name for our player of the game yet. We've uh, went offensively <laughs> leading up to this uh, one. Yeah. But you might have to search out uh, defense tonight for the Cavaliers. He said Swain's always there in the middle linebacker spot. Looks like Joey Shepard into the uh, defense now. They haven't called Luke Murtis' his name. Usually Luke is uh, pretty disruptive on defense, number 44. Sycamore's done a nice job of uh, taking him out. Second down and six for uh, the Spartans. There's Alt Peter, and he Boy. breaks a tackle from Murtis. And uh, Bell and Rodriguez have to team up on the tackle. But, uh, yeah, the Sycamore has a lot of uh, ability to break tackles. Yeah, you really got to wrap up, or they're going to just keep going through arm tackles. It's third down and about one, gain of seven on the play. 10.30 to go in the third. 23-0 Sycamore. They had a big kick return to uh, start this drive deep inside uh, LP's territory. Meyer under center. 
Carlson will go in motion. And Carlson's going to get the ball. He's got the first down. Short gain, but yeah. Swain, another tackle. Known as Sycamore a lot. Well, their players a lot will keep blocking late and then they'll throw their hands up. Yep. Like uh, trying to almost try to bait an LP player into uh, getting a penalty. Doing something, right? First down, Spartans. Uh, they're at the 25 of LP. And here's a pitch play to Crawford. Hit hard yeah, by Lynch, but he's still going, and they're going to stop him at about the 21 yard line. So, gain of four. Another stop by Mason Lynch out of the secondary. Gain of four for Zach Crawford. Yeah, he was hit hard by Lynch right there in the hole, but he was, he just, like you said, just kept going. Sycamore right outside the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Second and six for the Spartans. Let's see if they go in the air. Oh, Meyer is. There might have been a little mishap. Yeah, mishap there, it looks like. Rolling, throwing, and intercepted. Oh, Trayvon say. Hunter at about the 10. Trayvon's at the 30. And uh, going to be brought down uh, just outside the 35. So there's a break for the Cavaliers. Trayvon Hunter with an interception. Yeah, that's a big play right there for the Cavs defense, something they've needed the entire game. So uh, great play by Trayvon. He just stepped right in front of the receiver, uh, picked it up, and he had a nice return all the way to the their own 39, it looks like. Yeah, over a 20-plus yard yep. return. 39-yard yep. line, LP will start this drive after the INT for Trayvon Hunter. So, again, the Cavaliers got to try to get back in this game. Uh, they need points. And Whitfield going to pitch it to Corey Walker. Corey oh. turns inside and has, not kidding you, six or seven Spartan defenders waiting for him. That's the first carry of the night for Corey Walker. Yeah, it looked and like uh, Dawson Alexander from Sycamore was right there wrapping him up. So loss of two on that play. Second and 12 as they try to get Walker involved in the pitch. So they did try to open it up instead of running up the middle. But uh, I don't know if Sycamore just got too much speed to... Uh, to try that. Yeah, the penetration for the defensive line was uh, pretty heavy on that play. Second and 12 for the Cavaliers. Whitfield back under center. Hunter goes in motion and oh, Whitfield throwing deep for Ozzie Hernandez. What a catch! I think Ozzie got that one. Yes, what he did. What a catch by Hernandez going up against three Sycamore defenders. Whitfield threw it up and Hernandez dove Stretched out, and Ozzie gets it all the way down to the Sycamore 33-yard line. That's a 30-yard pass play from Woodfield to Ozzie Hernandez. So, yeah, like you said, he had three defenders there, and it just kind of popped up, and uh, Ozzie grabbed it. First and 10 LP at the uh, 33 of Sycamore. So some new life here in this drive. And Woodfield's going to run the option. Sean's got running room. And he gets it down about the 28, maybe the 27-yard line. So uh, LP making some adjustments offensively. They are showing a little more diversity. Yep. Uh, running to the outside, going to the air. Down to the 27-yard line. Gain of seven for Whitfield. Yeah, this is what you want to see after the Cavs get a turnover on the defense. In motion is Walker, and Whitfield's going to give it back to Carrico. And Matt stood up, maybe got a yard. So they go back to the up the middle run, and Sycamore was there. And yeah, they were ready for that one. Carrico to the 27. Well, maybe a yard. It'll be third down at about four. Three and a half. Yeah, that looks about right. And ball spotted at the uh, Sycamore 27 yard line. Four down territory for the Cavaliers. Under seven minutes to go in the third. Whitfield's going to pass. He's got time. Now the pocket collapses. Sean's throwing, and there's going to be a flag in the backfield. The ball was tipped. Uh, the flag was thrown out into the flat. The Sycamore coach act, uh, was shouting, wanting a penalty on LP. Oh, there's going to be a hold maybe on the Cavs. Let's see. The flag was thrown away from Whitfield, kind of in the secondary. Right. Uh, block uh, uh, below the waist on the Cavs, so that's a big uh, penalty on LP. 
Block below the waist. Well, let's see here the replay. We can see that over here. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Almost looked like uh, maybe a official, you know, the official that was in front of the Sycamore bench threw the flag. I think the block was near uh, yeah, where the, the action was. Right. Yeah, it wasn't out here. No, an official closer to the plate didn't throw it, but uh, the sideline judge who had, I'm sure, Sycamore uh, coaches barking in his ear threw the flag, and that's uh, a big mark off. So it goes from, what, a third and four now to a third and almost uh, so the game, game is slow, slow to, to a crawl, crawl here as you're trying to figure out what's, what's going, going on. on. We're, we're happy, happy there, there, there is officials. That's, that's the bottom line because we're hearing some horror stories of uh, games where it's been tough to get officials. Uh, they had officials saying roll the clock and uh, we are back in action. So it's third down and about 12 for the Cavaliers. Whitfield going to run the option. Oh, I was going to say pitch late pitch. Whoa. To Trayvon Hunter, and Trayvon gets back to the line of scrimmage and no further than that. As uh, Whitfield was uh, hit from behind. Yeah, he was swallowed up there, and he barely got the pitch off to uh, Trayvon, and Trayvon didn't have a chance either. And again, it was a short side of the field, so Hunter really had no room to try and turn the corner. Right. And uh, the ball is spotted at the 36 of Sycamore. Another fourth, fourth down, down play here. here. Yeah, yeah, this is the uh, sixth one that they've attempted. Obviously, this one on Sycamore's side of the field. Fourth down and about 12. Whitfield dropping back to pass. Boy, he's just Looking running up there again. Hernandez and uh, Sycamore didn't even really care about intercepting it. No, I think that was a smart play by them. They were just going to try to knock it down if they had a shot just because Sycamore's going to get the ball here at their own 36. Brody Armstrong uh, was the closest defender, and uh, he's let it go. That ball was thrown up for uh, Ozzy Hernandez, but uh, Hernandez had at least three or four Spartans around him. Yeah, there was no shot there for Ozzy at all. So smart play by the defense. Now they've got it first and ten going the other way. So LP unable to take advantage of the turnover. First and ten, Sycamore thrown 36. Here's a pitch play to Crawford. He's at the 40, spinning ahead to about the 45-yard line. Gain of nine. And uh, second down and one. Crawford with the gain. Probably time for them to try to get Carlson the ball here. Clock down about uh, a little over five minutes to go here in the third. Meyer hands it off back to Crawford again. He's got the first down and more up the middle inside the 50. Another seven yards. Looks like Rodriguez got the tackle from the linebacker spot. But not before Sycamore gets another first down. Yeah, back into the Cavs uh, side of the field. We'll see what the Cavs defense can do here. Of course, they got a turnover last time. Sycamore was down here. And misdirection. LP wasn't biting. That was a nice play right in the middle. And it swung right up the middle and uh, hammered the running back after no game, maybe even a loss of a half a yard there. Yeah, nice play by Chris Wayne. Bringing down all Peter. And that sets up a uh, second down and about 11. Gives Swain, Swain a tackle for a loss there. Here's the pitch back to Crawford, and he uh, kind of trips over his own player. And it goes down at the 45-yard line. Give uh, Will Doherty the tackle for the Cavaliers. Marked at the LP 45. Be third down and about six for Sycamore. Sycamore pretty, pretty much in control, control of this one right now. 23 to nothing. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're really in any rush or uh, they're not throwing the ball down the field. They're just uh, being deliberate and running the ball. Having their way, you could say, I guess, with LP at this point. See, Myers a little gun shy. He threw an interception last time. He's in a pass. Throwing over the middle. And oh, nice play there. 35 to 30. Oh, it's a blo block in the back. No, they're going to say it was a clean block. Wow. Right in front of the officials. Man, that was close. 
And uh, that was uh, Byron Blaze. That's a quality name there. Yeah, it is. Byron Blaze. Uh, big guy over the middle makes his first catch of the night. Uh, it was really close to being a block in the back in front of the LP sideline, but uh, must have been a clean block. Yeah, we're not going to get too many calls here right now. First and 10, Sycamore at the LP 23 yard line. Big third down completion by Meyer. And Meyer going to throw. Looking out in the flat to the speedster. And uh, nice job by Trayvon Hunter. And there's a late flag. Late flag coming in, like you said. From across the field. Yeah, nowhere near the play. Swain and Hunter gathered the tackle of Carlson, their speedster. I'm going to pick it up. Okay. I'm trying to think, has Sycamore had a penalty? They're a very disciplined team. I'm, I'm not saying they've committed one, but. No, no I, I, maybe I one, I, but I don't believe so. Yeah, they've, they've not made too many mistakes other than that interception uh, last drive. Yeah, this is a very a solid, fundamentally sound team. Second down in the 10 coming up for Sycamore. Meyer going to roll right. He's, He's got, got plenty, plenty of time throwing into the ground. That's got to be incomplete. Yeah, there was no chance of that play. That was uh, Jacob O'Donnell who's caught one pass tonight. Yeah, Ethan, Ethan Bell on the coverage, but the ball was really thrown into the ground, so. Yeah. So again, Sycamore is in field goal range at this point. Uh, their kicker got a 43-yarder already tonight. And they might go ahead and try that field goal just practice-wise. <laughs> they've got the big lead right now. Yeah, third down. Let's see if LP can uh, force them to try a field goal. Yep. That's what you hope to do if you're a Cavalier fan here. Clock stop with 233. Heavy formation for Sycamore. They're going to run it with uh, Crawford. And nice tackle. Oh, yeah. Nice play there. From behind. The initial hit was made by Luke Murtis. And then uh, Doherty came in. So did Rodriguez. So here we go. Here's an interesting call for Sycamore coach Joe Ryan. If, if they, they do go for a field goal, goal the ball is spotted. And I think they are. They, they are going to go for a field goal. 22 yards. So that'd be another. Uh, what is that? Is it 39? Yeah, that was going to be farther. Than, uh, about a 40. 40 let's see where they, they, the holder is going to be. Yeah, right at 30. So a 40 yard, no, 39 yard field goal from the right hash mark. This is Caden Lattice again. He doesn't do the kickoffs, just the uh, field goals. Yeah, I'd say false start. There's, there's, there was movement. So there's our first penalty of the night on Sycamore. There was a little movement on the offensive line. Now they're going to bring in some different personnel. Yeah, maybe they're going to go for it here. So it's going to be fourth and 14 now. But man, their kicker had plenty of distance in yeah. that first field goal. Uh, there's some confusion from Sycamore's sideline, what they're doing. Maybe. Oh, wow, the clock's going to be running. Yeah, they're it. bringing Meyer back out now. Yeah, they're going for it. So it's been 14. Yeah. LP's got to get a stop here. Fourth and 14. Trips to the left of Meyer. Empty backfield. Five receiver sets. Wow. Rarely do you see this in high school. Meyer throwing deep. It's up for grabs. Oh, in an incomplete. Yeah, I was going to say drop. Trayvon was the closest player there. Don't let it. Uh, the interception, interception there. Yeah, Cavs would have the ball in two. So, so nice, nice job by the LP defense uh, turning back Sycamore. And it's a turnover on downs. 120 to go. We're still at 23 to nothing. Sycamore leading the Cavaliers here with a uh, buck 20 left into the third quarter. And it's kind of cool. I see looking like the, the next booth over the right. next suite over they have a TV. Yeah, the they're able to watch the replay here. Yeah, on some, some of those possible penalties, penalties I was going to watch that over there, but. I'm sure you were. First and 10, the Cavaliers have the ball at their own 27-yard uh, line. Whitfield gives it to the second man through. That was not Carrico. That was by Trayvon, maybe. A rare carry up, up the middle this time instead of out to the outside. Maybe one or maybe two. Yeah, give him two to the 29. Second down and eight. We're under a minute to go in the third. As expected, tough sledding for the Cavaliers here in Sycamore. 23 nothing. the Spartans on their homecoming, keeping LP off the scoreboard.
Get the Cavaliers, Cavaliers go to the, the air. And we feel going to run the option. Pitches, Pitches to the Hunter. They, they get a block. Ah, oh, they're going to call a hold. And uh, they're going to come and bring it back. They call a hold. Yep. Hunter had running room, but uh, they're going to get LP with a hold. So it's going to negate a big run. Yeah, he had a big hole over there on that side, but maybe you know why. So that that's, uh, that hurts when you finally do get a pretty big offensive play. It gets called back for a hold. And a uh, spot of the foul penalty. And he's stuck down in very long. I don't know. I, I guess he could have had his hand in there, but it didn't look... Look at Greece, huh? Uh, no. Mm, yeah, I don't know. We're going to move LP back at the 18-yard line now. First down marker is uh, just shy of 40. Yeah, I think that's going to be the end. Uh, I don't know if they're going to get this one off or... Yep. Whitfield straight drop back. Sean looking. Throwing over the middle. Caught by Ozzie Hernandez again. Once again, Ozzie with the big play. Out to the 45-yard line. Hernandez, a big play receiver. Under 27 yards for Ozzie. As time expired in the third quarter. I'm going to give the Cavs a first down and 10 from their own 45. So the Cavaliers showing some fight here as we got 12 minutes to go in this game. 23-0 Sycamore over LP, but the Cavaliers keep a drive alive. Uh, back with the fourth quarter after this on 103.9 WLPO. Option again, a late pitch to Walker. Walker juking and jiving, and uh, Corey gets back to probably the line of scrimmage. So uh, Corey trying to make a little something out of not much there. Yeah, they're going to say just back to the line of scrimmage. And he's Whitfield with a left-handed pitch to Corey Walker. He was trying to spin away from a couple defenders. Yeah, he was. Uh, at least he's using the uh, wide side of the field on that yes. play. Second and 10 LP, 11 and a half minutes to go. Cavaliers down 23 nothing at their own 45 yard line. Whitfield under center in motion is Story. Whitfield's gonna pass, Sean rolling left. He's got time, still looking, looking, throwing. And oh, oh, Trayvon got behind the defender, but I think he tipped it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the defender Ethan number Storm. seven, yeah, I think he touched the ball yeah. there, or at least gotten uh, Trayvon's eyesight there. Yeah, nice play by Storm. Another good name on their defense. Yeah, they got uh, Blaze and Storm. Blaze and Storm, yeah. Yeah, he touched it. He tipped it. So uh, Whitfield zipped it in there. Trayvon got open. Yeah, and, and Sean wasn't trying to force it in. No. Trayvon was open, but uh, it was just a good play by the defense. So third down and 10 now for LP at their own 45-yard line. 11.06 to go in the ball game. Let's see, Whitfield goes back to the air once again. And I think LP had two guys moving at once. Oh, there's a ball moving. Trayvon all fumbles it, and Sycamore recovers it. I think LP would have had the penalty. Yeah, that was a very good option play. I think Trayvon wasn't necessarily ready for that pitch. 
and it was way too far ahead of him. Sigamore will uh, decline the penalty and take the fumble. Yep. And Trayvon couldn't come up with it, and then it started bouncing, and even when it's grass versus the turf. Right, and it's wet out know. there, yep. so it's going to be slippery a little bit, so no chance for Trayvon to pick that ball up. So another drive for Sycamore starting on the LP side of the field. 23-0, first and 10 Spartans at the Cavalier 45. Meyer in the pistol. And they're going to fake the end around to Carlson. Meyer, straight drop back, looking deep. Has a man open, and a nice play at the very end. Nice. Uh, Caleb Burrell. Yeah, I think he just kind of put his arms up, yep. and he didn't touch the ball or anything like that, but he just distracted the receiver. Oh, and just Mason we have, Lynch. Uh, something so, down here. Yeah, Matt Lynch went down. I don't know if he rolled his ankle or he's cramping maybe. Yeah, Mason just went down. Didn't look like there was any contact. No, and, uh, sometimes you get the, that kind of injury. It happens, yeah. unfortunately. And uh, heads up here by the Sycamore training. Uh, their trainer was right on top of it on the uh, Spartan sideline, uh, giving Mason Lynch some treatment. Take another check of our uh, subway scoreboard update as we have a break in the action. Here again, it's 23 to nothing. Sycamore with the lead over LP. Kiwani now up 35-21 over uh, Princeton in the third quarter. Hmm. Halftime Mantino, 28-0 over Streeter. Uh, let's see, a stick of Morris score. Halftime Morris, 28-0 over Marengo. So the Redskins uh, would clinch a, uh, well, five wins. 5-0, five so they'd be five and oh, yeah. playoffs. Uh, big win or big game uh, when it comes to Catholic uh, schools in the Chicago area. St. Ignatius over Mount Carmel, 17 to nothing. And again, here in the freshman game, it was 35 uh, to 8. Bureau Valley, uh, they were playing Sterling Newman. Uh, that's Newman, 26 14 over Bureau Valley. Uh, in the fourth quarter in that one. That's a Sterling Newman type game. They run the yep. ball a lot and it goes fast. So again, the injured player is a Mason Lynch. Mason's back up and they said, looked like he was uh, acting like he had a cramp. Yeah, he's walking pretty gingerly. Yeah, but yeah he it is. could have been that cramp in the, uh, in the hamstring. He's had a nice game. Uh, we've mentioned Mason's name quite a bit, uh, making some tackles uh, in the secondary. Clock to stop, 10.51 to go in the game. Again, we'll be back home for homecoming next uh, Friday night against uh, Woodstock North. That'll be a new opponent. Mike, I know you followed LP uh, football for quite a while. Do you remember LP playing Woodstock I North? I really don't think that's uh, been a common opponent for LP at all, no. Of course, they played, you know, some big uh, suburban schools when they were in the 70s when they were yeah. you know, getting to semifinals and whatnot. I know Wheaton North was a big opponent, of course, Jolie Catholic. Anthony Rodriguez brings down the ball carrier there, and that was number one, uh, Nathan Altpeter. He's kind of their short yardage guy, number one, Altpeter. And uh, their big game breaker again is uh, Sam Carlson, as we saw him get behind the defense. Yeah, we haven't called his name a lot lately, but no, he was pretty big in the first half. He's got the last two runs, yep. or touchdowns, a, yep. a pass, reception, and a run. Third down and eight for uh, Sycamore. They're going to pass. Meyer throwing out a flat incomplete. He was looking uh, for Caden Lattice. And uh, look like... Uh, Swain was out there, Ethan Bell as well, Trayvon Hunter. So yeah, we fourth we'll, down. We'll cover over there, so it looks like they're actually going to punt. Yeah, we might see our first punt of the night for the Sycamore Spartans. Man, one quarter so far has been the difference. Uh, a 20-point outburst by S Sycamore in the second quarter. Yep. Other than that, a field goal in the first, no scoring in the third, and so far no points. And we're only, you know, minute 49 in in the third or in the fourth quarter, but... Sycamore dominating LP overall. Yeah, the defense has just been play, playing really nice. Left-footed punter. 
And it's going to take a Sycamore bounce. Right, get away. Yep. And they'll down it at about the 16 of LP. So the Cavaliers get the ball back, and, uh, you know, their defense uh, is, is taking some things away from this game for sure, LP. Um, you had one big play again. They gave up the big pass play. You had the fumble right. recovery in the end zone. And, again, Sycamore's had quite a few of their drives uh, on the LP side of the football field. Yep, so that definitely helped. See if LP can try to put a drive together and get on the scoreboard before this game is over. Yeah, the LP defense has uh, done so well shutting out opponents over the last uh, this year plus the spring. They want to not be shut out here. Ten minutes exactly left in the game. In motion is Trayvon Hunter. Whitfield going to keep it, and Sean goes four for about three, maybe four yards. Two on the Second down and seven, they say, after their run by Whitfield of three yards. <laughs> and Sean's going to run the option, and he's going to pitch it to Walker. Corey turns it inside and gets some positive yardage out to about the 23. Gain of maybe four. Yeah, Walker was able to squeeze through a little hole there, gain some positive yards. Third down and three coming up for the Cavs. Nine minutes to go in the ball game. If you're listening to LP football on 1039 FM, AM 1220, WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. Cavaliers would likely go for it on fourth down. They go back to Care. Oh, fumble, oh, fumble. He fumbles it back, Boy, to came Whitfield. Right back to Whitfield. And Sean runs for a first down. Let's hope Matt's okay. There oh, was a hefty collision at the line. Boy, that ball came popping out right back to Whitfield. <laughs> <laughs> and from Carrico to lose control, uh, track of the ball or lose the ball, you know he got hit hard. Right. Because Matt's as tough as they come. And, uh, yeah, it went all the way back in the backfield to Whitfield. And uh, Sean uh, took off and ran down the sideline and got a first down for the Cavs at the 28-yard line. So we'll take it any way we can get it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that could have been a, a dangerous thing at the ball just rolling around. First and 10 LP. Clock to stop, 8.32 to go in the ball game. Walker goes in motion. And Whitfield faking the pitch. Whitfield rolling right, looking over the middle, over oh. through, and he had Hernandez open. And um, incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10 now. Yeah, it looked like the offense had uh, two receivers in the same area, and yeah. I think there was a little confusion out there. Ozzie was open in the center of the field, but the ball was behind him and over his head. So Second and 10 coming up for LP. Again, we'll be back home next Friday night for homecoming. And we'll have St. Bede homecoming game, uh, their homecoming game tomorrow afternoon. One o'clock kickoff. And I think the weather's supposed to be perfect for that, yeah. too. So I think you'd have a great day for a game. Winfield, uh, Whitfield with the option carry, and he's still going at the 45. And uh, no flags on the field as Whitfield, a nice effort. Senior quarterback gets it out to about the 48-yard uh, line. Gain of around 20? No, about 19. Yeah, one of the bigger plays yeah, of the night. Yeah. Very nice. Up, oh, clock's running, so. Again, LP, it'd be nice to get a score here. You never want to get shut out. And Sycamore's thinking the same thing. Uh, they would like to keep LP off the board. 23 nothing is the score. Oh, I think LP had a false start. So that'll move back five yards. Clock stop at 7.57. Move the Cavaliers back to their own 43-yard uh, line. 
And it's been a relatively clean game, relatively speaking, as far as penalties go for LP. I know they've had the problems in the past, but they've done pretty well. There's been a couple here and there, but not the, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine penalties that we've yeah. seen in the past. Yeah, they had a, uh, an illegal block. That was a big one, a holding yep. that brought back a big running right. play. Woodfield straight drop back. Pass oh, Sean is boy. flushed out of the pocket. Watch the ball. Oh, oh, oh. hammered from behind. Wow. I mean, he was ran over. It wasn't even a tackle. He just ran him over. No, Jackson Thunderbird. Him. Wow. And uh, Sean, I think, is okay. I mean, he gave him a big uh, forearm in the back. Yes, he did. I, I was thinking I saw him earlier on the homecoming court, so uh, <laughs> it's quite a difference uh, in look there for him. That was a big hit on <laughs> Sean Woodfield. Uh, so one out of bounds. So the clock stops at 720. He has a loss of about six. LP with a late substitution. The Cavalier is going to take a timeout. 23 uh, nothing is the score. Let's take a break. We'll come back after this timeout. It's LP trailing 23 nothing against Sycamore. You've got the rest of the game to make up for it. When something breaks down at home, you need prompt and professional service. That's why at Town & Country Services, their phones are manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to ensure that your problems and questions with plumbing, heating, and cooling are all taken care of promptly and professionally. Town & Country Services offer free estimates and affordable rates. Their licensed professionals and friendly staff have been a staple in the Illinois Valley since 1919. Give them a call anytime in Tonica at 815-442-3415 or Princeton at 815-872-2200. Improve the appearance and value of your home with new replacement windows and doors from Coolmaster. Stop in now and ask about Coolmaster's selection of Energy Star rated windows and doors. They'll help you reduce your energy consumption year round. Invest in your biggest investment with help from Coolmaster. For a free estimate, call or visit the Suarez family at Coolmaster. They've been serving the Illinois Valley for more than 60 years on 2nd Street in downtown LaSalle. Coolmaster, the area's leader in window and door replacement. And an Illinois Valley tradition for sports continues on 1039 W. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter back after the LP timeout. There was a fumble on the exchange. Carrico picks it up. Man. And Matt Ooh. gets a nice gain. Yeah, Whitfield was having trouble with the yeah. exchange, and Matt just took it. And uh, for the first time in a while, uh, well, I guess the last drive they got inside the Sycamore side of the field. That's at the 48 now of the Spartans. Yeah, it was a 10-yard gain by Carrico there. Two of the bigger runs for LP have been uh, almost fumbles. The first one for sure was a, where Carrico yep. fumbled it, and Whitfield picked it up. So it's third down and about five. Cavaliers at the 47 of Sycamore. Four down territory, obviously. Oh, no, there's another fumble there. And they did fumble it. Whitfield picks it up. Better get Sean's got to get rid of it, yeah. And he's just going to run out of bounds. <laughs> oh, come on. Sycamore uh, yelling for a penalty. Yeah, the coaches on that side of the field have been <laughs> harping on the uh, roughs. Huge loss as it is. Loss of 12. Fourth down, they're going to spot it all the way back to the 44-yard line. Well, I guess it's not much of a loss, actually. But it's going to be fourth down and long now for LP. Yeah, that was about eight yards. Okay, eight-yard loss. Not too bad. It looked, it did look much worse right. than uh... All right, so fourth and 14 from the 44. LP probably going to take another timeout. They will. So fourth and 14 coming up for the Cavs. They trail 23 to nothing against the Sycamore Spartans. Let's take another check of our uh, Subway scoreboard update. Kiwani doubling up. Princeton 42 to 21. Morris uh, threatening to run the clock on Marengo 35 to nothing. And midway through the third, Mantino 28 to seven over Streeter. I uh, got an Ottawa Woodstock North score. At the half, Ottawa was leading Woodstock North 15 to 7. Okay. I'm sure that one's well into the second half at this point. 
Is that at Ottawa tonight? Uh, no, I believe that's at Woodstock. In Woodstock, okay. So it'll be a long drive home for Ottawa. We'll have that in a couple weeks. And uh, the Cavaliers will punt it, and it's fourth and long. Yeah, that's the smart thing to do here. It's raining pretty good again. Pretty steady rain. Shepard at his own 30. And a pretty good punt for Joey. And, and it's going to take a bounce inside. Nice. And about the 11-yard yeah, nice line of Sycamore. There. So the Spartans up 23 to nothing. Six minutes and 12 seconds left in the game. You can feel it getting get a little cooler out there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a fall uh, <laughs> fall evening here. Ottawa now leads 22-13 after three quarters over Woodstock North. Benefit of being inside the press box. Yes. So first and 10, Sycamore. This is their worst starting field position by far of the night at their own 11. Just a steady light rain out there. And uh, they hand it off. Still going forward was Alt Peter. Wow. He just kept going and uh, got close to the first down marker. Yeah, it looks like they're giving him 10 yards on that one. So wow. Just kind of bursted through the line of scrimmage. And uh, as my partner said, give him 10 yards in the carry. Hmm. First and 10. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, continued uh, we're on the sycamore side of the field their fans have been right. out of it most of the night uh, lp has been on offense uh, little plays here and there and sycamores had one big play and there's another though big run by carlson for a first down another 11 yards yeah. so two chunk plays right there so uh, they move the chains again as sycamore quickly they run the shadow of their own end zone to start this drive, and now they're all the way out to about the 31-yard line. Clock rolling, five and a half and counting. And Sycamore really in no hurry here. Nope. Fans are starting to pack it up a little bit. <laughs> it is raining, so it's yep. coming down a little bit harder now. And Meyer hands it off, and there's there. Alt Peter, and uh, yeah, big hole, and yeah, and I see Lynch back in there. Yeah, Mason that Lynch. must have been a cramp at that time. Yep. So Lynch comes in and gets a tackle. And as you can see, some of the players having to wipe off uh, their face masks because of the showers. Yep, so three straight runs of over 10 yards. Offensive line here has taken over. And Meyer hands it off to the second man through. It's Carlson. He is spun down at the 45-yard line. Looked like Hunter and uh, Verdun. Verdun. Yeah, they were both in on a tackle. Three-yard gain on the play. And Sycamore is just uh, more than willing to uh, maybe get another first down and uh, run this thing out. 23 to nothing. Uh, I guess you could say workmanlike effort on the Sycamore side of things. LP really never threatening the Spartans tonight. No, LP really didn't get too, too close to the you end know, zone. Two drives, I think, inside yep. uh, Sycamore uh, territory. Did not get into the red zone once tonight. Nope. And there's a pitch. And you can tell he's kind of slipping around. Yeah, he's around. slipping. There's no doubt. <laughs> yeah, Ted was kind of dancing there. That Crawford. was Zach Crawford who couldn't really get his footing. Uh, he did turn it up enough to get down to the LP 49-yard line. So gain of about six. It'll be third down and uh, two for Sycamore. As uh, Mike mentioned, some fans heading for the exits. It ended up being a, only really about a two-hour game. Yeah, it was a very quick I mean, one tonight, considering the homecoming activities. Right, and didn't the start till probably 20 after seven, right. quarter after or so. Well, and uh, Meyer gives it off to Alt Peter, who has the first. No, he's going to be stopped. I don't know. It's, I think they might give it to him. Yeah, okay. they're going to push uh, them back. But forward progress. Yeah. Doherty was there. Warren Merwicki was yep. there. Uh, but Alt Peter was able to get the first down. And the uh, Sycamore starting to. Celebrate a bit on the sideline. Coach is happy with their performance again. They move to uh, four and one. LP falls to three and two. 
Sycamore will be uh, that'd be a good one next week. They'll welcome in Richmond Burton. Yeah, that'd be a nice game to see. Richmond Burton, like yeah. you said, is a uh, small powerhouse, yes, but they really oh. uh, do well. And that'll be fun next week here at Sycamore. Oh, nice oh, tackle by Chris nice. Swain. Ball came out, but uh, Carlson was down. And to do that to a quality back like Carlson, Swain just took him down in the backfield. Two-yard loss on that play. One would think, Mike, I think we would have to decide for a player of the game between uh, Ozzy Hernandez on offense and Chris Swain on defense. Swain's been solid all year long in the middle linebacker spot and made a nice tackle for a loss. Yeah, there's Carlson the two uh, good candidates right now. Second down and 12 for Sycamore. Carlson will go in motion. Oh, Meyer's going to pass. Gets beyond Murtis. He's in trouble. Doherty slips. And throwing deep and knocked away incomplete. Uh, oh Trayvon yes, was Hunter okay. was there on the coverage. <laughs> Surprised they're passing, honestly. Yeah. I know it's third and long, but. Two LP defenders, Doherty and Murtis, trying to get to Meyer, slipped and fell on this wet turf. At this point, I'm sure both coaches would just be glad to uh, get out of here with any injuries on this wet surface. There was players slipping and sliding all over the place there. Yeah, it doesn't look like there has been any injuries other than that no. one earlier, um, Murtis, but he's back in the game. So, Third down and 11. The clock stopped at 2.15. And they're going to run the jet sweep to Carlson, and guess who? Chris Wayne wraps him up again. Yep, nice play once again. Two-yard gain on the play. LP will take a timeout. Not going to take him back to LaSalle Peru with you, I guess. That might be their last timeout. I think they've taken two on offense. Yeah, I think that's in this their half. final one. Yeah, there's no, they're not keeping track on the board. They've got everything else on this scoreboard. <laughs> they don't have a, t they don't have no. a play clock or timeout. No. I mean, they're playing videos. They're playing commercials. Yeah, they get the commercial breaks Replays. in there. Replays. they got everything on here. Man. But, so I think someone's got to work on that. They got a uh, computer center that looks like NASA downstairs. It does, yeah. So yeah. they got a really nice facility here. And uh, the electronics they have, uh, I know our our uh, video guy is jealous uh, yeah. with what they've got going. So They have actually like a, a truck. Yeah, they have uh, a production truck, it appears. With, uh, probably a director in there. Yeah. About 10 TVs. It's a probably, they probably have some sort of courses like that. They're teaching the kids how to do this kind of stuff. So, Man, if Sycamore ever plays Sterling again. Uh, it's going to be a battle of almost like Anchorman, where you're going to have the uh, opposing um, yeah, they TV and camera videos, crews yeah. Yeah. Uh, meeting it. Well, meeting the end of other. the uh, third quarter, Ottawa 22, Woodstock North 13, and Marquette is leading Hope Academy 41 to 28 in the fourth. Marquette well underway for another win. So it looks like Sycamore is going to punt it. This could be tricky trying to uh, punt the ball in this rain. Don't hit. Yeah, there LP you go. brought, uh, but they didn't dive at it. Oh. And take a, a Sycamore bounce, and they'll roll it out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. So LP will have the ball one more time here in the uh, driving rain at Sycamore High School. Oh uh, yeah, now we've got driving. We do. That would be correct. We thought uh, we were looking at the future radar. Thought about what eight, nine o'clock hour. That was the forecast I saw. Yeah. But uh, what do the weather guys know? Sometimes <laughs> they knew it was coming, but I thought yeah. it was going to be later. But we're just thankful there was no lightning. And nope. That's the last thing we wanted. I mean, if we had a lightning strike at this point, I think the teams would just say, let's call it a game. Yeah, we wouldn't wait the 30-minute no. delay. No, with the 156 to go in the game. So let's see if the Cavaliers just kind of stick to the ground game and uh, concede here. Uh, Whitfield's going to run uh, the option, keep it, and go down. Just kind of tippy toeing his way because it's hard to get too much traction right now. Four yards on the carry for Whitfield. It is raining good. Yes, it is. LP uh, side of the field has cleared out quite a bit as well. The Cavalier faithful across the way. Yep, we all have a... Hour and some odd minutes, 10-minute yep. uh, ten drive, so might as well get back on the road, drive <laughs> safe. And Whitfield's going to keep it again, and Sean is tackled by uh, Ethan Bodie. 
And he's going to be stopped just shy of the 25. Third down and about four. Cavaliers may have two more plays in this one. One minute exactly, so. One minute to play, one minute to play. So we're going to finish this one likely with no scoring at all in the second half. Cavaliers will be shut out for the first time this season. Yeah, well, what we say that uh, Sycamore did the last time we played them, I think it that was, was a shutout, shutout as I believe, well. 49 to 0, I believe. Yeah, so it's something like that. 48 yeah. to 0. So, yeah, six, two times in a row they played Sycamore and lost by shutouts. Well, I mean, Sycamore is a quality program. Oh, There's yeah. just no doubt. And oh. a little mishap, and Whitfield's uh, in trouble. Sean's going to go down for a big loss. That'll hurt his rushing totals. Yeah, that stat's going to go down by <laughs> minus eight yards That's going to be it. Uh, they're going to just let this one go. So Sycamore is the real deal. Uh, the Spartans uh, dominate the Cavaliers really from the opening bell. A couple fumbles if they would have went the other way in the first half. Who knows? May have a different ball game. But Sycamore with an impressive 23 to nothing win over the LP Cavaliers. Uh, we'll come back after this and uh, start our post-game show. Jeremy Aiken, Mike Porter from Sycamore. Cavaliers suffered their second loss of the year, 23-0 to the Sycamore Spartans. And that's what the home's first smart water network does. It turns your everyday routine into a customized experience. Mowing. Fill the baby's bottle. And it can stop a catastrophic leak with a simple water designs our life. Who designs for water? The water. No one. Taco Bell presents a get out of bedtime story. It's time to wake up from this amazing dream, even though you're jet skiing on lemonade. How extreme! And oh, look at that. You just won the lottery. <gasps> Is that a castle? Take the keys. It's your property. What's better than swimming in space? Just wait for the big reveal. It's Taco Bell breakfast, and it's actually real. So it's time to wake up and bid your dreams farewell. Because toasted breakfast burritos are waiting for you. Only at Taco Bell. But this city Taco Bell location near you during breakfast hours only. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, wherever the mission takes us, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for our nation.